evening. I'd like to call to order today, Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023 public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Um, I am Susan Klaus Smith. I am the chair of the commission and I am an architect. Um, if you are here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation and your project should be presented in the following order. The site plan, elevations, architectural details, and wall sections. The staff will then present the staff report and we will then ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as your presentation. When coming to the microphone, please state and spell your name clearly. If you are here to speak for or against a project, your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following the public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal and then the public hearing will be closed. The only com comments which, which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the secretary of interior standards, historic preservation development review or HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing here tonight. The ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. All owner and or agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do turn off your phones or silence your phones. And I'll ask my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves starting on my left. Dan Myers, I'm a registered architect. John Prokop, I practice architecture. Brent Taylor, I'm a general contractor. Robert Miles, construction manager. manager. Stephen Sutton, I am a registered architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair for this commission. And with us tonight, we have Ron Vila and Alexis Guzman. And our attorney this evening is Dana Crosby, Dana Crosby Collier, sorry. <laughs> so we'll move on to our conflict of interest, ex parte. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, the first question I would like to ask is if any member of the commission has a conflict with any item on the agenda this evening? No. I do not. Okay. And has any member engaged in any ex parte communication relating to any item on the agenda this evening? No. I have not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Ron Vila, I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Before we go to continuations, I do have one announcement that's not reflected on the agenda, but the staff approvals for April 2023 are in your packets. They will be submitted to the clerk and put into the record. We could do a, uh, a motion to receive a file at the end of the meeting for everything that is submitted uh, this evening. Under continuations, we have one that's reflected, which is ARC 23-122 for the address of 1802. West Jaton. This request was by the agent to continue to the June 5th, 2023 public hearing at 5.30 p.m. And if we get a motion for that, please. I move for a continuation in ARC 23-122 for the property located at 1802 West Jaton Avenue to the June 5th, 2003 Architectural Review Commission public hearing at 5.30 at this location. I second. All in favor, please state aye. Raise your hand in your case. So. Aye. aye. Motion carries. Moving down the agenda, we're ready for the swear in. Ms. Guzman will swear everybody in that wishes to testify this evening. So everybody stand up, please raise your right hand, including staff, to be sworn in. One more time. This morning. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you provided today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. We're ready for the first case this evening, which is ARC 23 76. This is for the address of 609 South Willow Avenue. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. 
The primary structure is a contributing structure that dates back to 1923. Uh, the zoning attached to this parcel is RS-50. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for an addition to the primary structure for a new a detached accessory structure, which will be 750 square foot that is allowed by the zoning classification for the maximum to meet accessory structure setbacks with site improvements. At this time, I'd like to go through a brief photo presentation. I'd like to start off with the Sanborn map since we're a preservation board. Uh, the property in question is highlighted in the green parcel. It is an interior parcel. There is an alley that runs behind the subject site that runs uh, north and south. The subject uh, property is surrounded by De Leon. Then you have to the north, you have Swan to the south. Then it does face Willow and you have Orleans to the west. There is an accessory structure shown at 1929. There is currently no accessory structure on site. But you see the, the relationship from the Porter Cashier from the primary street as you enter the, the site. This appendage is a Porter Cashier and then it dives right into the accessory structure. Looking at the two story craftsman style home, you see the, the piers that are here, a little atypical of, of the, the piers and the, the massing of the piers. The structure, the primary structure is encapsulated with vinyl siding, also the overhangs. Are, have been boxed in, so a lot of the details have been uh, covered up over time. But this is the front elevation as it faces Willow. You see the front elevation and the south. You kind of peek and look at the little retaining wall uh, that encompasses the site as well, and that'll come up in, in the presentation. On that side, the abutting structure is a Another craftsman style with, with some uh, unique details. Moving back to the subject site, you have the primary structure and then the engaged porter cashier that's midway through the body of the building. Here you can see the retaining wall and as you go up that lap siding is, is vinyl siding. Um, so, and then you see the overhangs that they're boxed in. You can't see the rafter tails and the, and the brackets have been encapsulated as well. This is looking through the porter cashier at a shed. This is not uh, the, the structure that was indicated on the Sanborn map. On the same side, which is the north side, this is the abutting structure to get some context of the neighborhood. Some street shots. This is Willow. Uh, it, is a, it is a thoroughfare from the Crosstown to Bay Shore but there is a lot of street parking uh, parallel to the curb in both directions. Directly across the street, you have another craftsman style with a little bit of different uh, details. Moving to the rear of the structure and site, that shed roof will, will be coming off as part of this request. The upper windows will remain and the gable will remain. The stairs will be eliminated as well. To give you some context, this is just another perspective. And then to conclude, the condition of the alley in both directions. So it is a used alley. Uh, solid waste goes through there to pick up the, the garbage, and it's in pretty good shape for alleys within Hyde Park's district. That concludes the photo presentation. I have the owner, owner address the board now. Thank you, Ron. Hi, my name is James Smith. I am the owner of the property. My name is spelled J-A-M-E-S-S-M-I-T-H. Yeah. And I am Luis Alonso. I am the designer for uh, Mr. Smith for making the presentation for the improvement that they want, he won in the property. So my project is very similar to one of the products y'all approved last month um, for a, uh, a detached structure. So there's two elements to my project. First, there is a uh, lanai addition to the back of the property with uh, existing structure, which is 227 square feet. And we're proposing a detached accessory structure, which totals 750 square feet, 375 square feet of it in the garage, 
Um, and the first floor, second floor would be a 375 square, square foot bonus room. Um, we want to thank Ron so much for all his, uh, he spent a lot of time and effort helping us uh, put this plan together. Um, the plan was reviewed by the historic, uh, his society and transportation and um, ground storage and all of them, my plans uh, satisfy all the codes. There's no variances and they didn't have any objections to the revised plans. Um, our project will leave a 52% green space, um, which is within code. Um, we are going to start off with talking about the lanai. So here is the elevations for the lanai. So, yeah, so existing structure here. We have a small little back porch. This will be the new one. Um, so this structure is 227 square feet. It will mimic the existing house. So the um, piers will be the same as the house. Um, the materials will be the same as the house. Uh, the elevation on this um, so this lanai is going to be um, have 24 inches over the grade. That's it for the that trees don't have any railing. Yeah. So the columns of this structure will be wood columns and wood beams. Um, the piers will be smooth stucco finish to match the existing structure. The um, there will be wood beams attached to the piers covered by hardy board. The roof will be um, have exposed rafters. It will have um, 16 inches between the rafters and then the overhang is gonna be two inches to match the existing house. Um, the new structure will have some brackets to match the existing structure. Um, all right, so that's the generalization of lanai. We'll move on to the accessory structure. Yeah. So currently, when I bought the house in 2010, there was a dilapidated shed in the backyard, which I'm hoping to get rid of once, I will get rid of it once we get this started. So this is the front elevation as you look through the porticature. So it maintains the historical elements of driving the vehicle through the porticature and into the detached structure. Um, to enhance that, we're adding ribbons to, um, to the yard for that process. This, these are the elevations for the proposed accessory structure. This is the view from the front yard. Um, so single car garage, door, um, upstairs with matching windows, stairs. This is the back view, single car garage door, no windows on the top except uh, just the door. Um, for the stairs. So this structure is proposed to have a, a height of 21 inches, 21 feet, four inches. Um, we have made an application for an exceptional design to change the height from 15 to 22. Um, the first floor structure will be CME, CMU wall. Um, and then the garage and the doors will be wood with uh, windows. The second structure, secondary, the second story of the structure will be um, two by four exterior wood frame covered, and then the both the up stay, the whole structure will be covered in hardy board um, siding. The windows will be single uh, single hung wood windows to match the. Um, um, to match the appropriate architecture of the neighborhood. Um, the stairs will be railings in wood. The railings will be 42 inches height. Um, the overhang will have exposed rafters um, 16 inches apart. Um, and then it will also have matching brackets to um, maintain the architecture of the period. 
um, the roof will be finished with shingles. So this is for the lanai. Um, here you have the brackets for the roof. And then here you have the piers with the boards and the beams with the overhang um, for the roof. Here is the wall structure for the accessory structure. Um, what do you call this part of it? The yes, this is the footing. Yeah, so the footings. The footing when the concrete wings siding looks are the good siding. So footings, uh, concrete block, wood frame, covered with hardy board. Mm -hmm. And then here you have the brackets um, with the overhang. Uh, so this will, you know, this is period Pacific. Um, it's going to, uh, you know, enhance the neighborhood, enhance the property value, and it's definitely consistent with uh, the architectural fabric of the neighborhood. Um, so just to restate the main points, um, my next door neighbor is going to express her concerns about flooding in the alley which there's not any, but just to address that ahead of time, we have made sure that the permeability of the site is 48, 48, 52%. So that is, that satisfies code, it has to be above 50. And we are also putting in drainage on the accessory structure, which will drain into the yard. The lanai will also have gutters that drains into the yard and then that will have drainage that comes to the front to a bubble box. And, um, but like I said, the, the plans have been worked on extensively by Ron Vila and, and Louisa, and if we have no code violations, we're not asking for any variances, then this is very similar to the project that y'all approved last month across the street. Yeah, and the materials, show the materials. Which one do you mean? Okay, so we have collected materials. Here is a sample of a half round gutters that we will be using. Could you zoom out just a little bit so that we see the whole sheet? <clears throat> Thank you. There you go. So that's this kind of style for the gutters that's consistent with the period. You know, just a rendition of hardy board siding. The smooth hardy board will be used to cover the beams, the beams and the lanai. Hardy board trim will be used on the accessory structure for the doorways and windows. Asphalt shingles on the accessory structure to match the existing structure. The decking would be will be solid wood. The windows will be wood. The garage door wood with window, exterior door accessory structure, wood with window, lighting elements on the outside of the accessory structure. We'll pick out hardware that's appropriate for the period. And then the, the railing system will be wood railing system. Anything else? That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We will move on to the staff uh, report. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Ron Vila. I'm staff for Historic Preservation. 
Originally, staff found this application inconsistent with the Secretary of Interior standards and the Hyde Park design guidelines. The original plans that were submitted and reviewed had vinyl siding that encompassed the, the, uh, the addition to the primary house and, and uh, for, the, for the new construction for the accessory structure. Since that, we've been in discussion. They have indicated this evening that they wanted to put Hardy on the addition, which would still be inappropriate, but I believe the plans that I looked at had, vine, uh, had wood siding on it, so I would revisit that area tonight before it moves forward. Uh, there are some letters that were submitted. They're in your packet. We have uh, a multitude of them that are uh, supporting the project, and we have one that is against the project. Just to touch upon the, the water uh, situation with stormwater, that with all projects come forward, stormwater reviews every project along with natural resources, with zoning, transportation, and historic preservation to look at the consistency with the project. Initially, when this project came forward, uh, the calculation came in at 68% was not pervious. After they did their uh, recalculation, it shows that 52% that is pervious. Code requires that 50% has to be pervious. So this request meets the city of Tampa code. Stormwater is uh, involved in this. They have reached out to the, the uh, property owner that uh, generated the letter. They've been in discussion. As this project goes through the, the process towards permitting, they will put their eyes back on it and make sure that city of Tampa code is adhered to. So this isn't a stormwater board, but just to give you a little bit of background that it has been addressed and is still being addressed as we speak. So if the application has been altered and that there's lap siding wood on the, on the addition and the, the detached structure has hardy, then the inconsistency will come off and the project is consistent. Having said that, we had a series of conditions that were attached on page four um, through the project and through the presentation. They addressed some of them, but I'd like to elaborate on on the rest of them, uh, we, we discussed fencing originally. There is no fencing being requested this evening, so that item is not to be addressed. The next one uh, addresses the, the cladding of the vinyl. Uh, you could ask the owner what their intentions are moving forward. Uh, the design exception for the height uh, has been uh, engaged already. They're in the process, it has not been approved yet. So as part of the conditions, if this is to go forward, uh, that should be put on the final approval. Uh, moving down uh, the list, uh, some of them were addressed. The overhangs were a minimal exposure. Uh, tonight, they're at 24 inches. Uh, we don't know exactly what's under the, that siding, but if you could delegate that to staff as they uncover it, uh, we could you know, come up to a solution that is sensitive to the primary house. The columns on the rear addition, uh, they were in flux until this morning. They were different proportions. We had them kind of scale them down to be in scale with, with that addition. They're six by sixes with a capital and a base. Very simple. Uh, I think that meets our criteria. Uh, the two last issues I have is one is that through the presentation, they showed one elevation of the addition. You need to walk around and look at all the elevations as well. And on the accessory structure, Look at the floor plan and see if there's an opportunity to put some more windows in that structure. It's lacking some windows, so I'll leave that up to the board. I'll be here to answer any questions, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Vila. So now we have the uh, public comment period. If there's anyone here who would like to come forward, you may do so at this time. And please remember to state and spell your name and your relationship to the project. Thank you. Hi, my name's Virginia Smith. I'm at 610 South Orleans, directly behind this house. And um, I don't have a fancy attorney. I'm not all that well prepared, so I'm kind of green at this today. Uh, I do have some pictures on my phone. I'd like to show you the flooding we experience all the time in our little strip there between Willow to Orleans. We've written lots of letters to the city, almost had them a couple months say that they would work with us on it, but things have already changed on that. And now they're saying, no, there is no problems. We're not gonna deal with that. The city doesn't have the money to deal with that right now. But I own a bungalow. I've lived there since 1985. People in Hyde Park, and you all know it as a board, because you've heard it from all the people, build these piggybacks in extra big houses 
onto the little bungalows. They eat up all the, they cut, he cut down every single tree on the yard. I watched him get it cut. He cut every, he leveled the yard of every tree. Um, he, uh, you know, they cut down the yard so you don't have trees to absorb the water. You don't have, um, you, you add all this structure so all the water's pouring off more. He actually graded his, I watched him about two months ago, grade the dirt up higher so that makes the water even pour more into the alley and into my backyard, which I have pictures of. And, you know, so his land's already higher than mine. We also have the church on the other side that a few years ago, without a permit, I believe, because it happened one weekend on a Sunday, on a holiday weekend when nobody was around, graded their, the church graded their parking lot to repave it. I saw dumps, I saw big trucks with brown dirt dumping it in there. They graded it up higher and they paved it over in a weekend. They had some church members or somebody probably get them a good deal on a quick deal to get it done on the weekend. Now, holiday weekend, nobody was around. I'm always there on the weekends. I see stuff going on. Anyway, so we got all that water that's been dumping from the church parking lot down our alley. It runs all the way down our alley. He's two houses down from the church. Now he's building this big structure and he's built up his dirt. So all that water is coming down into the alley and we're all getting flooded out to the point that last summer, which I have pictures of, the floorboards in my original 1985 bungalow, that original heart pine, were starting to cup because the water seeps under your house and sits there for days. And the moisture, as it's evaporating, is cupping the underside of your floors, okay? There's other people in Hyde Park that have this. I know you've heard this story. I just want to ask you as an ARC board, are you protecting us as neighbors anymore? Because I feel like so much goes through where, you know, all these little nuances and nobody's seeing the flooding we're dealing with. You know, adding all these square footage is not helping us. Taking down all the trees is not helping us. People grading things where they want to is not helping us. None of this is going report, none of this gets taken care of with the city. It's gotten very lax, this whole board thing. I don't even know why we bother. We're so tired of yelling and trying to get this fixed that we've kind of given up. I'm trying to figure out if I should just br get a, a brick mason and pay a lot of money and just have a big, L-shaped or U-shaped concrete block wall so all the water can go back to everybody else because that's all we're doing. We're shoving water from one guy to the next. And I ask you to think about the neighbors. I'd love to show you the photos. I don't know if I have time to do that on my phone. Nope. Sorry, you've run out of time. Thank you. It's just, it's, it's too bad for the little guy that doesn't afford the attorney and all the fancy people. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Virginia, for sharing your concern. Um, I am uh, Tabita Lepina Henson, and I live at 609 uh, Southfield Avenue. I'm the fiance of Mike Swift. Um, we went around and we signed a petition with the neighbors uh, to see if you know they approve our project and if they have any concerns of flooding. So I have proof of that. Everybody. Uh, Whatever it's a star, that means they live on this, we share the same alley. So that's one page. And then I have another page. And then one more. So um, this is the alley that we share, and then um, we have pretty much all the other neighbors never complain about flooding, and they say they have not experienced flooding. We are uh, the Willow Street, we are very united neighbors. We care for each, for each other, and we care a lot for our neighborhood. We like to beautify it, but also we like to conserve the historic part of it. So um, I'm all in for this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any others who would like to come forth at this time? Thank you. Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the uh, question period beginning on my right this evening. Mr. Sutton and the applicant and agent, please come forward. We will be asking questions at this time. <coughs> Good evening. If you would please, could you bring up your posed elevations for your addition on your primary structure? Elevation, addition, okay. primary structure. The elevation. He wants the, to look at. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. The, 
the elevation for the lanai, the lanai is over the over piers, and the finished floor elevation for the lanai is 24 inches over the grid. And the finished floor elevation for the accessory structure for the garage is only four inches over the grid. But the square foot for, from the accessory structure and the square foot for the lanai no increase the impervious area in the property up for, for, for over the 50%. It's only we have pervious area 52%. In any case, if this increase and we have to give some solution, we have additional solution for store water, for retention of the water in the property. We, because we have a space on the, the a slag in the garage where we can store the store water for this site. That conversation I uh, uh, stayed with the uh, civil engineer from Sirius Tampa and was some recommendation, but at this time, as we don't pass from the 52%, we have 52% green space, the solution is going, going down a spot and pipe on the ground and finish at the, fre uh, at the front with bubble box. That is the more economic solution in this case that is not over the 50%. Thank you. Um, I actually think my colleague was asking for the building elevations. Oh, for the building elevations. But thank you. That was going to be another question for oh. me. But I think that's where your, that was your a good, question that was a good was explanation. Go. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So this is uh, the uh, view on one side for your uh, accessory structure. Do you have uh, oh, the view for the other side and on the back side as well? Do you want the lanai or accessory structure? The, the lanai right now. Okay. The so, lanai or the accessory? He wants okay. the lanai. So that one that you're looking at right now is left? This, this one's is the right? Lanai. The elevation for the lanai is 13 feet 2 inches from the ground to the top of the roof. Okay. This is the other one. Look this here. is the front and the back elevations. Yes. So every window and door we see here are existing, correct? Yes. Yes, this sir. Is existing door and this is existing window. Okay. So basic. And the windows at the top. So basically, this lanai is being grafted, if you will, onto the back side of your existing structure, correct? You we're going to remove that. The, there's a small existing um, porch, and we're going mm -hmm. to remove that, and then attach this to the house here. Uh, how are you going to be dealing and working with the siding that is on this uh, uh, on this uh, uh, existing structure? Because you're going to be removing some yeah. things. You're probably going to have to do some patchwork, replacement work. Right. My five-year plan for the house is to restore store it back to a more preserved nature, which I've talked to uh, Ron Vila about. The goal eventually is to remove all the viding siding from the house. So this project is helpful in that we will remove all the vinyl siding from the back of the house and repair it for this project and then move, make a, another application to do it for the rest of the house in the future. So this two-story pod that we see uh, on the back side of the house, the existing house, the vinyl siding that is there is going to be removed, correct? My house is covered in vinyl siding and the back of the house, the vinyl siding is going to be removed and the underlying wood is going to be repaired. And repaired. So everything that's going to be, you know, uh, patched or whatever, such as the door that's being removed, um, that's all going to be done in a in a fashion of wood that's going to be matching what you find behind yes, that. Um, just out of curiosity, have you removed any vinyl siding yet, just to find out what's underneath it all? Yeah, um, I've <laughs> I removed some of the siding off of one of the windows. Yes, so there is. Um, it needs a extensive some repairs, so needs <laughs> it's going to be a project. needs a lot of work. <laughs> but the, yeah, the house needs a lot of love, so okay. that's the goal is to um, as we remove this vinyl siding and 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 add this lanai to repair the back of the house to the original condition wood planks. Um, last question regarding your lanai, and this is going to be your proposed rear elevation. Uh, you've got your basic A-frame roof going up over this element. Uh, and it forms a triangle. 
what is happening on the inside of this triangle? Is that going to be clad in material? Because it's very hard to read that from this drawing. Um, <laughs> so if you're... Finished. Or is it going to be open? Open. Uh, it can be open or can be finished with a good siding too. The, well, you got to make a fashion, choice. Because the front of the house is finished with good, good siding. Mm -hmm. That can be open or can be... Well, that's where I'm getting at with this here, too, closed. because it looks like it's being enclosed. Am when I you're correct standing in the lanai looking yeah. at the ceiling? The no, gable, no, 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 the, the gable end. The gable, oh, no, the gable in the solution, in this solution, is closed with good siding. Okay, and but, it's going to be a wood siding matching the house. Yes. Okay, so that means now you have this, this, this closed A-frame like this. What are you doing for the ceiling on this lanai? Is it going to be open? Open. It's going to be an open ceiling. Okay. Let us now move to your accessory structure. Do you have interior plans for your accessory structure? Yes. We have the floor plan for This is the first floor plan. And this is the second. In the second, there are a new bedroom, bathroom, walk-in closet, and a wet bath. And the first is the one-car garage. We have a two window at the second floor, a grass window at the bedroom, and one entry door. And both the garage doors and the entry doors, both uh, upper and lower level, uh, have uh, glass lights in them, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, extra wind, so at, with Ron's uh, statements, so there's two windows here. Two windows can be added on the top back if, if y'all feel necessary, that'd be fine. I think that'd be a wise move. I would also think it'd be a wise move to have one, uh, 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 one or two windows on the lower level of your garage on the west side. Uh, that might be a, 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 an advantage to be, uh, no, not the west side, the north side, which would be uh, the, the side closest to your neighbor. We yes. um, originally left that out because I was worried about security concerns, about somebody to break in, breaking in, having easy access to break in. But I mean, we can change that. We can look at that. We will discuss that, I think. Uh, that's all I have for question at this moment. Can I please see side by side the primary structure and the accessory structure? I think I, mean, I just wanted to the work out the memory. The side plan. Okay. Siding pattern size. The side plan? Yes, elevations, please. He wants this one. All right, so here's the. That one. No, the building elevations. Oh. The elevations, the building, building and the yeah, Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is the building location. There you go. This is yes. what it is. There we go. Okay, there you go. So the siding will be matching the primary structure size type pattern, right? Correct? The, yes, we, the outside covering of the accessory structure will match the size of the siding on the uh, original structure. Okay, and that's going to be hardy board. Um, I thought hardy board was allowed, but um, we can put wood if that's what Ron recommends. Hardy board. No, we got wood. Is according wood. to Hardy on the accessory structure, board on the front. Oh, yeah. So hardy, hardy on the accessory okay, I just want to confirm that. Hardy board for that space. But they'll match in size. Okay. Um, so that it's consistent, the fabric and the, and the brackets will, and the brackets for the roof will also match. Okay. I got no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. To piggyback his question, um, the texture of the siding, is it you plan to have a textured siding or a smooth siding? You referred to the trim as smooth trim, but what's the texture of the siding? Uh, there will be smooth. Okay. It, uh, in the neighborhood, everything's smooth. Yes. And then when we restore the original building, it'll be smooth, yeah. Okay. You mentioned you were going to be covering the beams on the lanai with siding. 
the beans, the bean will be with a smooth board. So will it be a trim board or will it be siding? No, no siding at this time. It will time. be a trim board? Yes. Okay. On the plans, the windows on the accessory structure look to be one over one design with no grids. Is that the plan? Yes, sir. The door has a different grid pattern. Is that the grid pattern you're proposing for? Um, yes. Okay. Because <laughs> we drawing the the details and later the the picture that we picked was that we found. I just want to confirm so we've got it for discussion later if we need. It, it. was an arbitrary. The, the the door was just an arbitrary pick off the off the design program, but we can we can make the door look whatever the. Well, that's the question: is what door type are you proposing? For, for the picture. Okay. That is that is in 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 cell. Because then the, yeah, the picture was even yeah. a different design. So. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I took. Yeah, I don't have a, I'm sorry, I don't have a specific, um, this was a last minute addition and I don't have a specific um, choice. So I'm open to suggestion. Okay. We can, we can discuss that. Yeah. The only but the, other. The weird thing about my house is, um, you know, at some point in time in the 70s or 80s, they, um, replaced all the windows. So, so all of my windows don't have grid patterns in them. So I was just gonna keep that consistent with the accessory structure. This is the garage. We're not asking because of a preference. We're asking just so we have the knowledge to know exactly what the plan is gonna yes. look yeah. like. The only other question I've really got is kind of going back to this stormwater issue that's really not an issue for this board, but because it's come up a couple of times already, I feel like we probably should at least look at it. Um, is there a drainage, I mean, I saw the drainage plant plan taking the water from the accessory structure potentially to a box in the front yard. Um, as far as drainage plan of the actual current situation, is it draining to the alley or is it draining to the street? No, to the, to the front yard. My. The draining is from the accessory structure on the, on the ground through the front yard and finishing with the bubble box in the garden at the front yard, no at the alley. Okay, and that's the current situation. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. for that situation, we uh, sitting with some ingen civil engineer from City of Tampa, and they give other solution is that this is this is a conflict. But at this time, when we making the calculation and review the calculation, is over the 50 percent the green space that we remain in the site. Whenever I talk to the neighbors, no one else on the alley has a drainage complaint. This. And we don't have a flooding or drainage complaint. This is my current backyard. Some water drains through the alley. The majority of the water drains to the front into Willow. Okay. There is already an existing slab. This is the existing um, shed. So this is the current situation. So currently, so the reason I'm asking, just so you know, is we actually have some pictures that were in the record of the alley that look to be quite deep. But unfortunately, I don't know the circumstances surrounding that particular rain event. Yeah. So I can't really speculate one way or the other. Right. I'm just, again, uh, asking these, this question mainly to make sure that we we are draining because usually the city of tampa wants you to take it to the street not yeah. the alley 
Yeah, currently the majority of your yard drains to Willow. And you'll see with the little map that I drew up when we went and talked to our neighbors, there's 12 houses on the alley. Seven of the people that we talked to, which was all the people that we talked to, none of them are stating that they have any flooding problems. Okay, understood. All right, thank you. Mr. Prokop. Um, quick question while we're talking about the site. Have, have you by any chance had the soil on your property have a, what's called a perk test done to it to determine whether any water can drain through the site, you know, down without running off the site? You've not had a perk test. Okay. Um, <clears throat> have you got, a, I don't think you do, but have you got a beam wrap detail for that lanai? No. We you don't, don't have, have a detail. It's just it's just wrapped in hardy board. Okay. Yes. Um, the windows on the um, the accessory structure. It was stated they were wood windows. Yes. But the window you brought up said Geldwin clad. It was yeah, on, on it was a quick photograph. I didn't really. I just saw the word clad on the photograph. Could you bring up that window? Yeah for, the, again. yeah, for the accessory structure, we want uh, wood, wi aluminum clad wood windows on the accessory. Okay, so it's aluminum clad wood windows. Yeah. Okay. Um, the lanai floor, what is that? Wood beams. Wood no, I mean, What's the wood decking beams. material? Is it, is it just pressure treated pressure wood? treated lumber yeah it's stained is it painted stained. Yeah. it's stained where the, are there going to be openings between it so water can drain yes. through to the ground yes it won't okay um on the um the hardy board siding that you also brought up a photograph of the photograph says the photograph shows that it is a grained hardy board but yet in testimony it says, you said that it's smooth. But the photograph evidence, the evidence that was being introduced okay. said it, it shows grain. Which one is it? No, for the hardy yeah. bar, for the hardy bar is with grain. The smooth is the finish for the beam at the lanai, the, the beam that you have over the columns. So I didn't realize that there is a difference, but from the I understand that y'all want the accessory structure to match the. Not necessarily. Obviously, it's not going to because it's aluminum. Your existing house has aluminum siding, right, so right. you're not going to match the existing house. Um, and we don't know really what's underneath the existing aluminum oh. siding that you're going to eventually expose over time. So we're just approving this accessory structure. Okay. Which, in typically, in typical historic properties and throughout Hyde Park and elsewhere, the accessory structure can be built slightly different than the main house because it's subservient to the main house. It's lesser than the main right. house. It's kind of like a secondary piece of structure and minor and smaller and shorter and doesn't usually have all the exact same details as the main house. Um, but we're just trying to clarify testimony. So I mean, okay. we want to make sure that whatever gets into the record is clear okay put it that way so the photograph says it's grained yes it's yes grained. So we're, for, yeah right. that's okay. it for the basically accessory structure. all right i just wanted to clarify that um here's same on the house 50 percent addition i don't think i have any other questions right now i just wanted to clarify those things okay thank you okay mr myers um <clears throat> Did we previously see a set of drawings that had ribbon driveways, or am I con confusing this with something else that I looked at this afternoon? We, our plan has yes. a ribbon, yes. That we have ribbons. That we're yeah. adding. So you're removing? No, sir. No. The, we, uh, we have my existing driveway is solid. Uh huh. And then um, between the porticature and the accessory structure, we're going to have ribbons. Ah. Okay. This is the two ribbons. One so we're not planning on changing the, the current. 
directly freedom and freedom when free free separation. Okay. And um, currently you have an existing slab back there. And the, but that's closer to your rear property line. So there's no driveway, you know, between your carport and that and your shed or whatever. Correct. Okay. Yes, so in fact, and I don't know if you've done this uh, calculation, but well, more are, are you adding impermeable slabs or are you reducing them in this from your existing? Yes, we we. If you see any square, half the square foot that representing over the lot for every portion of the concrete, of the ribbon, of the square foot, of the accessory, the house, and the lanai. Mm -hmm. The current slab is going to be destroyed and removed. Right. Yes. So are, do we have a net gain or a net loss? Net gain. So you're, so you're a net gain, now I have to think, a net gain, a net gain of permeable. We're improving the permeability. Okay. And if you do a perk test, then you'll know, which is a, a good thing. Now I'll get <laughs> off that and get on to the architecture, which great, is what great. we're supposed to talk about. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. Um, and you're not, um, you are not going to do any fencing. So well, I'm going to apply for it later. You're going to apply for it later, okay. Okay, so we've got Okay, no further questions. Can you Thank slide you. that site plan just down a hair so we can actually see the alley? And just there we go. So I have a question. Um I would suspect that you intend on conditioning the the interior spaces that are going in the accessory structure, the upper the upper floor spaces, correct? Conditioning, what does that mean? Putting air conditioning in. Oh, yes, Heating, yes, heating and air. Um, that means conditioned air. So yeah. when, we, yes. when we mechanically condition it. Where is the unit, the outside unit, if there is one located? Under the stairs. Under the stairs. In the elevation for the accessory. There you go. So with, without a fence in place right now, how is that going to be screened from public view, because unfortunately, without a fence, you you are in view of the alley, and we all know how activated the alleys are in Hyde Park. They actually are a thoroughfare, not just for cars, but for people, right? Well, my plan is to to apply for a fence, but I didn't want to complicate this application with anything extra. Until a fence is put in place, it is a requirement to screen your units. Yeah, no. So we'll have to consider that as well. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other outdoor units, pieces of equi equipment that are intended for this project that we should know about? Oh, nothing new. At this time? Okay. And then in terms of the, um, the lanai, are there any f ceiling fans going in? Most likely, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that will have to be coordinated as well with, with staff. Okay. okay. Um, that is it for my questions. Any other questions for the applicant or agent? No? Well, you have five minutes for rebuttal. If there's anything you'd like to add into the record or just respond to any of the questions that maybe you just thought of. No, I think that's, do you have anything you want to add? Okay. No, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing and we will discuss the case among ourselves. Thank you. I do think, um, just making a note about the stormwater issue and to address the concern in the audience. We understand that there are complications sometimes, especially in, in historic neighborhoods where storm infrastructure is oftentimes the old, oldest in our city. But as noted before, it doesn't come under our purview. So um, hopefully the other departments that are responsible for that do come forward and assist the neighborhood um, other than that we really can't do anything about it so um, it seems that everything fits within the parameters of how
how we need to respond to permeability and permeability on our building site. So, other than that, any other topics we should discuss regarding this case? Yeah, I'm in on the. Uh, um, the stormwater management, uh, I just think that it's uh, laudable in the first place that uh, they've gone th th that extra length, which we don't really don't see, um, about, you know, collecting it uh, with their additions uh, and their accessory structure and moving it away from you know, a potential sore spot uh, to a more uh, uh, reasonable location. And they're doing this, I don't know, almost the hard way. I mean, they're doing this uh, by collecting it, booting it, and piping it. So um, I, I, I think that they've addressed that issue quite well, personally myself. Uh, the issue that I want to raise is, uh, do we want to consider the need for any additional windows uh, in the accessory structure, both on the second, uh, uh, both on the upper and the lower level at this point in time? I do understand uh, that there is a, a, a certain degree of concern regarding security. Um, that you know, today uh, these hurricane resistant glass windows uh, and doors are remarkably resistant to a forced entry. Uh, so I think that may be you know, a moot point in, in certain regard. And of course, once a fence comes into play, securing the whole site, the whole security parameter changes. So to me, the idea of adding windows for you know, useful light in both you know, garage workspace sort of a situation or in addition to the back side of uh, the alley side of the uh, accessory structure on the second level will greatly enhance the interior character and usefulness. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, and the, the alley side, obviously, you know, the, the, the window would want to be smaller, particularly because mm -hmm. it's in a shower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like we have these big double, you know, uh, windows, you know, to the half window. Right, the half window and even, you know, you can have window film on there, something else like that. And I understand the natural light into a bathroom is always nice. Um, I think the, the, the window, anything on, else on the alley side is, is kind of superfluous because the door right next to the little kitchenette mm -hmm. wet bar already has glass in it. Um, and then not putting windows on a side that's facing another property is also a, a, I mean, I understand that from a, from just a, a privacy standpoint, you know. Um, but uh, I think it's something they need to revisit. I'm not going to say we need a window here, 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 here. Yeah. That there are certain uh, 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 environmental aspects that natural I, light I brings. I from the historical aspect. Historically, you would see, and we don't normally have just blank walls on the alleys. Mm -hmm. um, and we've we've. We've talked about this in, in prior cases that historically in these neighborhoods we would see that, and even if it's a little tiny skinny window or something, yeah. It, yeah, and I've got full size ones on my little one, um, but that they do they do reconsider that and look to the historic record within their neighborhood, and mm -hmm. probably within their alleyway, not knowing theirs specifically, but um, there are examples that they should uh, review and. Consider and, I have, and I have no, no, no issue at all with, 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 uh, with making this a staff coordination item. I, I agree um, in terms of the size and the proportion, you know, and the location. I just, I really encourage that those walls, those blank walls mm -hmm. be uh, reduced, uh, even the side facing the side neighbor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other thoughts? The only other thing I'll really add is just to clarify, and maybe we can kind of let that coordinate with staff too, but on the texture, because we got a couple of different answers there on the siding texture. Um, I got one from Mr. Smith, and then of course mm -hmm. he got a different one from the designer. So whichever one we feel appropriate, I feel like we should clarify tonight uh, as far as the windows I mean I'm in I mean once it gets painted two or three times it's not it won't matter painted. anyway but <laughs> it, but it will I mean that texture that's on Hardy uh, it's a little different it's, it's pretty deep it's, it's, yeah, it's it is. 
But, but on the other hand, too, I, mean, I think you know, the idea of using that exclusively for the accessory structure gives it a certain degree of differentiation. Oh, differentiation. I, I have no problem. Yeah, I, I said I didn't have a which, problem. Which works in this particular yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. Which because most likely what is going to be uncovered on the main house would eventually be, would be smooth. is going to be smooth finish. So I agree. I don't have a problem. And they, and they, I don't have a problem either way. And they, I thought that they did clarify that, that everything, the siding, the, the trim, everything on the primary addition was going to be wood and so we know for certain the materiality will be different right that's correct for sure yeah. yeah that is correct i don't know if we need to add anything like concerning the texture or smoothness of the hardy board on the accessory structure i really I don't, don't it's unless it's like extreme and, but then again staff's going to review those drawings before they right. um, get out in the field okay so I mean, so really, what what I have is, is review the ceiling fan, review the screening uh, screening of the HVAC under the uh, the accessory Stair. structure stairs, and revisit some additional windows in the accessory structure with staff. Mm -hmm. Of so course, I, we also have the, uh, the the coordination with staff of uh, whatever may be necessary for renovation work on the existing siding of the primary structure, because we really don't know what that circumstance is. Restoration and or repair. Yeah, because we don't we don't have any information at this point in time in terms of uh, uh, exposure, trim work, uh, profile. I agree. There should be some language that addresses that in the okay. in the mm -hmm. motion. And then, of course, we have the design exception for the accessory structure height. Exactly. And the coordination of the line, uh, the lanai ceiling details and fan placement. Um, yeah, What's ceiling fans, box? ceiling yeah. fan, and 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 the uh, the beam box detailing. That's true, but I didn't see any details in there. Yeah, I asked. They, they don't have it. Yeah. Or uh, was it the ceiling, whether the ceiling of the lanai follows the roof line? We, don't, we also did not have They may ask. not have a ceiling. No, they said it was open. It's open. It's it's open. open. Okay, so we're going to, so are they going to have? You'll see the underside of <clears> the roof deck. Yeah, so right now we're, we're looking at the, uh, we're looking at plywood. Wow. So that it's a rear, it's a rear. It's design. rear, and the fact, the yeah. question of whether or not it was an enclosed gable end mm -hmm. helps with that. And they answered it would be closed, it would have the siding right. enclosure. So, whatever's going on underneath that, you really aren't going to see it from the public. I mean, it's so f it's removed from the alleyway. You, you can't see it until you're inside the line, exactly. Yeah. So, typically, we don't, especially at the rear of a primary accessory. You Worry too much about right, that. the rear of the primary, we don't we don't worry about that. Only on for, only on front. No, 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 no. I mean the underside of the ceiling. If we can't, right? Yeah. Right, right. But I want to say we, we don't do. find the rear of the primary unimportant. Right. <laughs> but they will also learn as soon as they they build it that all the nails are exposed from yes. the roofing and they're going to cover it with something. Yes. But they didn't know they didn't have that. Or have they that know discussed. now. They do know. They know now. now. Um. And if it does but come up, and if it does come up in the under construction, that's going to be a coordination. It'll, it'll be a, exactly. it'll be a very nice little beadboard trim, you know, beadboard tongue Probably through tongue little piece thing mm -hmm. that you cover up the nails with. You actually just tap them into the nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, some, some and some and some Okay, yeah, okay, really we are not getting here. into that realm. <laughs> okay. I do not take responsibility okay. for their detailing. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can we entertain a motion at this time, or do we need to discuss any right. other points? Let me get my ducks in a row here. Okay. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23-76 for the property at 609 South Willow Avenue with the following conditions that uh, that the accessory structure HVAC unit gets some sort of screening whether it be uh, man-made or uh, planting the ceiling fan uh, location design be coordinated with staff that the applicant uh, reconsider adding some additional windows to the accessory structure um, that this is conditioned upon receiving a design exception for the height of the accessory structure 
and that we see, uh, or that the staff review uh, beam box detailing um, on the uh, lanai and that staff be consulted when, I can't read what you're writing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that staff be consulted once the uh, rear existing wood under aluminum siding is uncovered and, and be um, a part of the restoration repair of that. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park design guideline uh, of the city of Tampa for the following reason, that the uh, accessory structure is of uh, proper massing and scale and fits in with the fabric of the existing neighborhood um, and is complying with uh, chapter 27 of the city code. I will second that motion. Before we move to a vote, do you understand the conditions put forth here tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We move on with the vote. Those in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you all so much for your time. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff for Historic Preservation. The next agenda item is ARC 23-169 slash REZ 23-44 for the address of 305 South Boulevard. This is in Hyde Park Historic District as well. The current structure there was constructed in 2005. It is a non-contributing structure. The underlying zoning is PD. The recommendation that you're gonna review this evening and forward to city council is from a rezoning from PD to PD. On page three of your staff report are your duties and powers. Just briefly, I like to read through them. We have a new commissioner and then I'll, I'll bring it to your attention again when we get into the staff section. But under chapter 27, 113, A to J, your authority and powers are as follows. With regards to the application for rezoning, changes to land use classifications or comprehensive plan amendments, to review and recommend reasonable land use changes to the extent necessary to preserve the historic integrity and appearance. Having said that, that as I go through the photo presentation, just to give you some history, that this site was outside of the local district. We expanded the district just recently in January. It was approved by city council, and this is a, a part of the expanded area, so it, it falls under your purview. This evening, uh, the request is to add one use to the underlying PD, which intensifies the, st the site uh, concerning parking, which the owner will go through uh, that with you. But hopefully it becomes clear exactly what the request is. Starting with the Sanborn map, property in question is an interior lot. Obviously this structure is not there. This is the historic structure that has been removed. <laughs> It does face uh, South Boulevard. To the north, you have Platt. There is an alley that runs behind it that uh, helps address the uh, automobile access uh, to and from this property. Looking from above the aerial, you have, once again, Platt to the north. You have South Boulevard. I'm sorry, Ron. That fronts the is building. that an alarm or is that someone's radio playing? Okay. Sure I was afraid we had a fire alarm going. No, it sounds like music. I don't know if it's coming okay. from outside. All right. Sorry. So sorry, Ron. But we'll we'll check into that. Okay. Um, the reason for the aerial to show you the massing for the structure itself and then the parking is contained under the, the, the uh, structure and towards the rear. And then the alley is behind that. To clarify... This is the local district of Hyde Park. This is the whole district here. What I have in yellow was not included in the district. Since we expanded it, we've incorporated everything north of De Leon to Horatio, Azeal, all the way to Platte. The subject site is here on South Boulevard, almost to Platte. So it is incorporated into the expansion area and that's why it's in front of you.
This is the, the structure that was built in 2005. Uh, without any review, it's a pretty good shot at you know meeting the massing on site. Uh, they could have been more intensified and they, and they kept it down. So I applaud them for that. Uh, but this is looking at the elevation as it faces Boulevard. This is Boulevard. This is the vehicular access. They have a pedestrian access as well. And then this is the south elevation. Moving to the north elevation. Going to the rear as you come through the parking area underneath the podium. This is the parking outside of the building to the north. There are some spots outside that abut to the south. Looking back from the alley, these are the two parking areas I showed. And this is the throat coming in. There is parking underneath, which is here. This is looking underneath from, I have Boulevard to, to my back, and this is looking towards the alley. And as you experience the alley, it has been an improved alley. And in both directions, you see the condition of the alley. At this time, Mr. Mechanic will address the board. Thank you, Ron. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is David Mechanic. Uh, I'm one of the building owners. I'm an attorney, and this is uh, a building for that houses our offices. Uh, we are here tonight because we filed a rezoning. The purpose of the rezoning was to make one change and one change only to add as a permitted use medical office. And the purpose behind that is simply to create options for the future. The zoning currently only allows business or professional office. We are proposing no changes whatsoever to the structure. The only change that occurs is in the rear parking lot because the code, the city code requires additional parking when you add medical office. Uh, we wanted to meet what we determined. We submitted a study with the zoning application and determined that the national uh, average for medical office is five spaces per thousand. So we wanted to achieve that. And so on your Elmo, what you will see is that we are adding one parking space at the northwest corner of the property facing the alley. In order to accomplish adding the one space, we have to reduce the buffer area from eight feet to four feet. That is the sole change that we are proposing this evening. We do not believe this has any bearing on the character of the historic district, and we would respectfully request your approval of uh, this, or recommend approval of the zoning application. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, if there, we don't typically have a staff report for this, so uh, we do still allow public comment if there's anyone here to speak for or against. I don't see any. So um, I'm sorry, sir, you can stay at the podium. We'll go ahead and um, start asking questions. We'll start on my left tonight with Mr. Meyer, if you have any. Uh, yes. For Mr. Mechanic. Sorry, Mr. Mechanic. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So. In the, uh, in the document that I read earlier today, you said, if I am remembering correctly, 24 spaces would be required? Yeah, that is the city code is six, uh, is six spaces per thousand, but we submitted a study, which mm -hmm. is also submitted to the ARC, which indicated that the national average is only five spaces per thousand. So what we did, we are proposing to add one space in order to meet that national standard of five spaces per thousand. And by doing the, and by 
changing the PD, as you change the PD, then uh, you are not, because it's a PD, you're not required to meet the standard number of parking spaces. No, we are asking for a waiver under uh, the rezoning. Okay. That's part of the request, the rezoning application. Okay. So, looking at this in a, in, a, in a not very favorable way, you're asking us to allow you to put four cars on South Boulevard. Well, uh, uh, from a legal perspective, I don't think you're being asked to approve the waiver, but I would defer to your legal counsel on that. Ah, okay. City Council, um, after you all make your recommendation on this rezoning, then the City Council will take it up, and actually the City Council would have to um, approve that waiver and condition as a condition of the rezoning. Right, so uh, w we're being asked to recommend, recommend putting, I'm sorry, I used the wrong term. We're being asked to recommend, recommend to the City Council putting four more cars on South Boulevard in this area. We are not being asked to put four cars on right. Boulevard. We are being asked PD to PD. Right. To the make difference a being the change in use. Correct. Yes. You're, you're being asked to make a recommendation on this request that's before you now. And this is, yeah, PD to PD with an additional um, use for medical. Well, and to, to, to clarify, we're not adding four more cars. The study that we submitted indicated that there is not a demand for those four additional cars. So we are saying that the number of spaces we are providing is adequate to meet the demand of a medical office. And you don't intend, there is no, at this point, you don't want to, you don't have someone knocking on your door saying, I want to, I want to rent this for medical. No, no, we have no immediate plans. And again, we have no plans to change the structure in any way. Thank you very Thank much. You. No further questions. Mr. Prokop. I have no questions. Mr. Taylor. Can we pull up the picture of the rear just so we can get a better idea now that we know where that parking spot is going to go to kind of see how that's going to change that area? I think the best one that, that I have to show you that illustrates it, it's the, the buffering that, the, the horizontal buffering that was required when the PDA came forward is here. This is the last parking spot and this is the, the buffering area, the eight foot area as it approaches the alley, the alley's back here. So he's incorporating the additional parking spot here to get up to the 20 that he says that his study meets but it is shy of the, the, the request by adding medical to the use within this site. So my next question would be to the applicant actually. And just for clarification, so are you achieving this extra spot by adding pavement or are you gonna reduce the parking spaces themselves to the city minimum to no, try to the, get that. We, we are adding uh, pervious pavers. Uh, and I have a probably a, a little bit better photograph okay. of the area. This, this rear buffer would be reduced by four feet, but what will be put in its place are pervious pavers. Do you know what the width of those parking spaces are currently? Um, these will be compact spaces. I think they are 18 feet, but I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. What about sure. side to side? Nine foot, 10 foot, eight, eight foot? Oh, uh, eight feet. Eight they are eight feet, feet yes. so they're smaller. Okay. Yes, sir, the, the, the spaces would be restriped 
in order to add cop pack space. I have no questions. I have no question as well. So I just want to follow up on your national average study, and I, I get where you're coming from. What what years did you take those numbers from in your study? Oh, they were in the last couple of years. Okay. I mean, the city the city staff actually prepared a study, and my consultant updated that study as of last year. Okay. That was my only question. Um, any other questions for the applicant? No? You have five minutes for rebuttal if you want to take I have take nothing time. else to add. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. All right, we will close the public portion and discuss the case. I have no issue with this. I think uh, <clears throat> a factor of reducing potentially unused or unusable parking is, is an advantage, particularly in a compact uh, area such as our Hyde Park. This is a motion in the right direction. I mean, I, he has some lovely little magnolias back there, I think, and those are a shame to lose, but. Um, Where are the magnolias? They look like myrtles to me. Yeah, They're like yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll take them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have some dead ones. We, we will be replacing the tree. Okay. Um, I can't park in there regardless, so. <laughs> But they did, they did have on the other side, they were keeping those spaces, so those are for you. Uh, <laughs> um, are we clear about what it is we've been tasked yeah. to So what I Please. see is... Uh, yes, okay, let's, let's okay. just tap. So I'm going to read you the section of code that we're, that we're looking at with this item, and it's um, subsection J of section 2A27-113. With regard to applications for rezoning, changes to land use classifications, or comprehensive plan amendments to review and recommend reasonable land use changes to the extent necessary to preserve the historical integrity and appearance of the locally designated landmark, landmark site, multiple property designation, historic conservation overlay district, or historic district in accordance with the applicable design standards. So that's what you all are supposed to look at when you look at a rezoning request. And by adding one space, I, I, I don't see how we're changing that, me personally. I, and, I and agree, it faces the alley. In essence, where it's at, I mean, may actually be helping the longevity of the use of the building by giving it more uses. Agreed, agreed, especially since we're seeing so much change in space right now coming out of the pandemic. Um, any other thoughts? I have a motion. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, we are trying to maintain, we are. Are you asking a question of council? Yes. May I get a motion to reopen the? Yeah, I think the key closed it. Yeah, I did. I said I closed the public hearing portion. Oh, I don't, oh, and I can't. All right. No, no, no. She so, only restated the statute so that we had it clearly in front yeah. of us. Okay. So uh, I will didn't uh, ask her to. So we want to preserve the historic integrity and appearance of the historic district in accordance with the applicable design standards. And I don't think that our design standards talk about on street parking, do they? We can't, we can't talk about on street parking. It's not. Right. Yeah, so, um, um, so this uh, this is about a this is about a alley. use change. Yeah. Yes. And the use change is the thing that triggered the parking discussion. Yes. And so he's they're doing their best to meet that, and they used they updated an existing city study, study with current numbers as late as last as recent as last year was the testimony given tonight. Yes, but if this were not a PD, yep. it would require 24 spaces. Or they would go for a waiver. Or they would go for a waiver. Correct. So while it is not consistently one of our concerns, I, would just, I just want to point that out, right? And that parking is an issue in the district. That said, I think that I don't want to, I want to, yeah, I, yeah. I will not belabor the point. Yes, yes. Um, any other thoughts? The 
way I see this is they're trying to go for something that typically would need more spaces per city ordinance. But his hope is he gets a recommendation tonight to take the city council, which could then be denied at that point because of the parking spaces. Correct. Um, but if we were to give a recommendation and it does go through, we may have achieved, I mean, the people that are gonna park on the street if it's available, but they're also gonna park in this parking lot first. And then there are those of us that drive large vehicles that, that have to Uber do the in. best we have that we can yeah, do. Maybe park down the um, road so you know we're we're going to fight parking problems in these areas from this point forward. But what I see is a plan here that I feel like falls within what we're trying to achieve with this area. Um, while giving the owner some additional uses. I see your point, but we're only adding one space, so <coughs> one car is all that could ever be added to this particular parking lot. Mm -hmm. I think the thing about historic districts too is we're always sort of uh, trying to negotiate what it means to create uh, a fabric, a new fabric that meshes with the old fabric that indeed works together to continue to grow and, and add vibrancy to that district. So I, I think by adding, being allowed to add that use and meet it in this way. Well, we're dealing with an area that. of town that was developed and we protect a time frame when cars were the side of carriages. That's correct. Not, you know, cars the size that we have them now. So yes, we're gonna fight this forever. Agreed. Agreed. Any other thoughts? No thoughts. I have a motion at this time. I move to recommend to the city council approve ARC 23 169 REZ 2344 for the property located at <coughs> 305 South Boulevard in the Hyde Park Historic District for the proposed rezoning from PD to PD for the reason that the current development patterns of this immediate area of the district are being maintained and that it's consistent with Chapter 27113A2J. A second? I'll second. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Commissioners, good evening. Ron Vila, uh, city staff for Historic Preservation. This will be the last agenda item. This is for uh, case ARCT, which indicates this is for the tax ad valorem. 23-02. The address is 905 North Florida Avenue. This is a local landmark. So the only criteria that you're going to use this evening as you get into discussion are the Secretary of Interior standards. There are no local guidelines um, for a landmark. The, the zoning is C CBD, the Central Business District of downtown. The request is for an ad valorem tax exemption part one. This is pre-construction. You're gonna review the building in its current state, and then with the improvements that the owners are choosing to come forward with, there, it's very heavily uh, situated on a photo presentation. They're gonna have some language associated with it, so it's gonna be easy to follow through. We assisted them in their presentation. They're gonna start on the exterior, and then work their way to the interior. They'll show you a floor plan, and then work their way up. This is a 19-story building. Some past action. Um, I recall back in 2000 that this building was compromised and uh, on the verge of uh, discussion for demolition. Uh, the prior owner came forward, uh, renovated the building. He received an ad valorem at that, well, in working from 2000 to 2012. In 2012, he received the ad valorem and it ran for 10 years. The current ad valorem has lapsed 
and now they have the ability to come forward with additional renovations to the interior and exterior of the building. Uh, as part of the ad valorem, it is an elective process that if there's minimum qualifications to enter into the ad valorem, that is it's either in a local historic district in a contributing structure or it's a local landmark, which this one qualifies, uh, and that it, it satisfies uh, the budgetary input of $10,000 or greater, which $10,000 is not very much these days. So this qualifies to move forward for the ad valorem. Uh, there's a, a joint effort as this moves forward. The property appraiser with the county will go out, assess the building, and after rehabilitation, they'll reassess it again. And whatever that assessment is, that's the savings in between that will be granted to, to the owners. That is an independent process. We don't get involved with any evaluations. This board or the city does not engage with that. So a little bit of background that I wanted to give you. Just very quickly go through it because they have a lot of photos to show you, but because this is outside of the districts that you usually see, just to orientate you, this is downtown. Uh, it's on the corner of Florida Avenue and Cass, which is where the local landmark which is here. This is the podium shot as it faces Florida Avenue. You see this little canopy cover which will come into play later on. And then as you look up the shaft on this building and then the Capitol on top. Moving to the ground level on Cass. And you see the back is really un un uh, ornate Usually the, the, the money was spent on the street elevations and there was probably another building here, so not a lot of uh, exposure here. It was probably shielded from public view. So the podium here, and then as you look up, the shaft and the capital on the building. Just more of a grand shot to conclude on the exposure on the corner that it has. Uh, Florida Avenue is a one-way street and as you're leaving downtown, you really get a view of this building. At this time, the owners and his team will come forward. Thank you, Ron. Um, my name is Joseph Smith. I'm joined here with Lisa Shastine, who uh, is our legal counsel, who actually was involved with the original restoration with the prior owner before us. I'm also joined by Ryan Hennessy, who's from PDSI, which is a hotel project management and restoration company as well as Chris Eastman. Chris um, is also our day-to-day -day representative from the uh, renovation on the ground. Chris used to run Suffolk Construction for Tampa Bay, as well as work for uh, Daryl LeClaire, who many of you probably know from the development side here in Tampa Bay. So I like to think that um, we, uh, we've assembled a, the best team we possibly can to get a quality project. To give you a little bit of background on us briefly, and I won't bore you with too much details, but we're passionate about restorations. It's what we do, it's what we love. We've done everything from restore the uh, Earl of Cadogan's home in London to a hotel that exists today that's actually a Belmont Hotel in London, to uh, restoring Faena, which is a, a historical renovation in Miami Beach uh, that was a, a close to 200 key hotel in Miami Beach, to La Posada de Santa Fe, which is a uh, hotel in Santa Fe, which you can imagine not only is it a Victorian home, but it's actually surrounded by Pueblo structures, which is important to the native uh, community there. It was actually a place where George O'Keefe used to paint and actually reside. So if you think about constituents and stakeholders, we are very familiar with those issues. And, and uh, we really don't refer to ourselves as owners. We refer to ourselves as stewards of properties because we're acutely aware of the fact that we are having this property for some period of time and we'll move it forward to uh, to the next generation. Um, I will, i just like to thank you. This is super important for us for a, a few different reasons. Number one is uh, when you think about it, we'll spend probably $30 million in this restoration. Uh, the prior owner before me probably spent another $30 million in just the renovation dollars alone, not to mention land costs and the actual cost of purchasing these assets you're probably talking about more than market value. So without these type of concessions and help from the, uh, the city and from the ARC, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to do these type of things because unfortunately in today's world, it costs more to restore than it does to build new. And so it's very important. I want to thank you very much for doing this. And without further ado, I'll get into the, uh, or at least we'll get into the technical aspects 
uh, of the project. So we're very excited to be here. Uh, one, a couple of the things that I'd like to mention, sorry, I can't help myself and I won't don't. go too long. <laughs> Everything we're doing is really a restoration. When you think about what the prior owner did, what he did was kind of more of a pleasure project, right? For some reason, cherubs appeared on, in the paintings and the chandeliers ended up being not consistent with the chandeliers that were there before in the asset. And it became, it's the name of the asset says it, a palace, right? Our vision is not a palace. Our vision is a, a 1920s Grand Dom asset, very much in the way the Vinoy is a Grand Dom or the Don Cesar is a Grand Dom. And what you'll hear tonight is even things like the facade of the building, which you see on the screen above you, is a six and a half million dollar restoration just to preserve it, not to change it, not to architecturally change any elements, not the coloring of the brick. Not, it's just repointing the whole entire building, replacing brick, replacing terracotta that's been water damaged. The, the property does have water issues and, and leaks uh, throughout it. So really what we're talking about is making it structurally safer and more sound for not only the occupants of the building, but the residents that walk by every day but also making it you know, a, a property that is actually just safe and enjoyable by everyone without risk. As you maybe know, there was actually some bricks that fell from the building a few years ago. Um, we don't want to have that happen again. I think the prior owner, unfortunately, didn't take it far enough. We want to finish the job, do the right job, fully restore the facade and the property. So with that, I'll hand it over to Lisa and take it over. Thanks, Sean. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing us to present. My name is Lisa Shasteen. That's L-I-S-A-S-H-A-S-T-E-E-N. And um, I am going to be um, sort of co-presenting uh, here. Would you like to? Sure. Ryan Hennessy with PDSI, as Joe mentioned, R-Y-A-N-H-E-N-N-E-S-S-Y. -E -S -S uh, Chris Eastman, Eastman Construction Management, E-A-S-T-M-A-N. So we, we brought a team because we figured there might be some important questions and we um, want to be prepared. Um, so I wanted to, we have a lot of photos and I think that'll help just tell the story of what we're doing here. Um, first let's go through the history. I've, I've assembled some of the historic photos that um, we used in, uh, in the 20, 2005 to 2012 restoration that Tony Markopoulos did. He brought the uh, structure again back to life, which was something that nobody had been able to do for 30 years. So we have to really thank him for that. Um, I worked with him daily and I, I grew to love him. Uh, he was very passionate about it, but as Joe said, this building is the type of structure that needs constant attention and iterative care. It cannot be cared for once and that's it. So um, that's why we're here. Um, so here are some of the, the um, you can see some of the facade views. Um, you know, we're, we're going through the, you know, the different, uh, different facades. Obviously, you're familiar with this building. It, it can't be missed in downtown. Um, these are each of the facades, and I'm going rather quickly because I have a lot of photos to go through. Um, you'll see the existing condition in a little bit of areas. You know, these are just representative photos. We've got entire reports, which we've actually filed with your staff that, that detail the exterior condition of this structure, um, which documents all of the help it needs. Um, I'm just showing you in this presentation for the interest of time a few photos that represent what's going on here. Um, so you can see some of the exterior cladding issues and the and the coping stones. And would you like to say anything about this, Ryan? Yeah, I mean we're we're treating this this building um, very. The the team that we hired uh, the GC uh, is Western uh, specialty contractors. They that's this is what they do. They go to historic properties and they get them back to the way they should look with the utmost care and the utmost skill. They've assembled their own team of skilled craftsmen that go up there and use special tools that they're trained specifically to use on historical buildings and they're very well versed with this property. We've been talking with them since October of last year. So we've really taken the time to put the scope together that needs to be completed. Okay, thank you. Um, and then you can see here some of the challenges that we're um, facing right now. You can see the, the state of the masonry, um, the need for repointing, the you know shelf angles, you name it. Um, 
this is the type of thing that just continues to deteriorate over time or maybe was not cared for, you know, exactly right in the first in the first place, but believe me, the first restoration was, was a yeoman's task. Um, so moving on, the terracotta elements are so beautiful on that building, and those are uh, some of the elements that are most vulnerable, and they some of them have cracks, and we don't like to see that. Um, can also be a safety issue. Um, and obviously, you know, those things that let in the, the water um, have caused some damage in, inside the building as well. So you'll see that when we get to the interior. So here's a, here's a new proposed uh, lighting format for the hotel. The base would still be lit. I, it's not shown here, but the, the emphasis is on the top just to show how it would be sort of framed and, and um, given a new look to, to garner attention for the hotel. Um, as for the canopies, we, um, we're we um, proposing to just uh, re-roof the canopies and restore. You will see uh, there's some missing um, golden blooms at the top, uh, so the rhythm is completely broken there. Those would be restored. Um, there is also some signage that we're proposing uh, over the canopy area, but they would be behind the blooms, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, again, I'm just running through this for time. Um, the storefronts, you can see, you know, the historic storefronts, they are essentially the same. You can see some canopies over the windows. We're not proposing that right now, um, but you can see the status of it today. This is our existing condition. And now you can see the deterioration. Um, these storefronts were made out of wood uh, and installed by the prior owner, but there's been a lot of wear on these things. So these all have to be restored and refinished and, and replaced with like kind materials. Just a little more of that. And you can see there's some gapping and some missing hinges and, and things that need to be addressed. Here's part of what you can see from the inside resulting from the water intrusion. You can see the, the window damage. Um, none of the windows are going to be replaced in whole. They are going to be repaired and restored with like materials or just repainting and, and sealing. Um, so, what, and you can see here the, um, the, the muntins and the, um, you know, the rusting on the metal windows. The metal windows are on the north and um, I believe east faces, mm -hmm. and the southern and western faces are wooden. And they'll all be wet sealed too during the project. Thank you. Did you want to say that up here? <laughs> I might be able to hear you. Can you can you please repeat that because yes. it was the windows difficult. will be wet sealed during okay, them, so you. they won't be operable. Thank you. And then you've got um, you've got the exterior signage. We're we're proposing the the uh, rooftop sign will be repaired and. Uh, restored and it will stay. Um, that's the historic signage. Now here you will see an introduction of the proposed signage for street level identification of the structure. This has always been an issue for this structure. There's no way to tell where the heck you are or what it is from the street. <laughs> so this is one way we can do this. Um, so what we're proposing here and I'll show you is on either side of the of the uh, Cass Street um, canopy and also on the south side of the Florida Avenue canopy we would propose these um, these letters and you can see that they would be lit from inside and they would be sat on very narrow supports um, but behind the golden blooms above. So, and above so they would just sort of float in the air and at night they would look like just the letters floating in space. <clears throat> so now we we come to the roof portion of this. You can see the roof is is sort of um, in bad repair. What we're what we're proposing is to go ahead. Yeah, please. Yeah. So um, a couple of different roofing projects that we've got going on um, in the lower right. You can see that's the fourth floor roof. Um, it is inundated with mechanical equipment. We'll talk a little bit about some of the mechanical work that we're going to do as well. But that roof gets completely replaced. Um, in the upper left, that's the um, 
that's the high roof. That roof also gets replaced. There are a couple of dog houses there that need to go away. We're going to backfill with uh, structural components um, and then roof over that. And then the, um, the pop-ups, the uh, stair towers, um, there is um, some penthouses up there. The roofs there are a little bit newer, so what we're going to do is an overlay on those roofs. Uh, but obviously the roofing being a big part of the building envelope needs to be needs to be redone as well as all of the exterior facade work. Okay, so now let's go inside. Um, we're looking at the existing ground floor and I will um, let you guys explain, but um, the, the existing or the, the proposed uh, changes on the ground floor are essentially moving um, a corridor, and if you guys can, can point maybe to the, um, on the prior slide, it might be easier to show, um, the, um, I don't know if we the can corridor. do that on, um, yeah. on the Elmer. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Is we'll just put it down here. Can we, can we move to this view? Oh, okay. You, should, you could zoom in. Perfect. Yeah. That, would, that would have taken me an hour to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, right. Me too. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you guys want to point to where we're um, making the changes. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. So um, so the changes on the first floor, we've got, uh, we've got a service quarter back here uh, that gets some work, obviously. Um, okay. So um, this is really the back of house area here um, where there is a laundry um uh, there's back a house for staff, um, that kind of thing, housekeeping. So all of that's here. Linen is up here in this area here. Um, there's uh, a cafe um, and, of course, the, uh, uh, the bar and the restaurant area down here, which isn't part of this project. Um, this uh, back area here is um, recently open for um, retail. Um, so there's um, that's up, here. Uh, yeah, up, up in this area here. Yep. So um, that is at the corner of Tyler and Florida, um, and that will be um, av available for lease uh, as the owner um, moves forward. Yeah, so if you're familiar with the hotel, um, this is, this is uh, um, currently a gym, and it's, it's moving upstairs. We'll get to that on the third, the me mezzanine level. It's going into the ballroom space, which is not historic. Can we have five more minutes? Make a motion to add five minutes to the presentation I, I move that we add five minutes to the presentation a uh, second please I'll second that. all in favor please state aye and raise your hand and you aye, aye. 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 thank you very much thank you so um, this is all back of house this was the laundry and service area so where they're making most of the changes is in a connection they just um, widened a little hallway that goes to the ballroom space which was uh, back of house and that's about it. And they're, and yeah, they're easy as said. There's really nothing happening in that floor except for the yeah. connection to the non historical building yeah. next door. Yeah. And that's and the retail space and everything mentioned is actually in the non historical building next door. So it's right. got nothing to do with this right now. Right. Yeah. So then, okay, so now I need to go back to PC. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right, where am I? Okay. So now uh, that's this is just historic. Ground floor photos. You can see the the interior of the gym. Um, the the photo on top to the left is the cast treat entry, as is the bottom. Let's go down to the second floor. This is the most significant floor in the hotel. This is um, this is the lobby area. So I know we're going to have a lot of um, talk about this, but we we're not making a lot of significant changes here. We are proposing that we use a, a smooth finish on the um, on the walls because the finish that was done was sort of a knockdown um, previously, so it wasn't really historic. historic. Yeah, so... And, and you know, I'll, I'll give a little overview. Go ahead, please. I, I yeah. love talking about the lobby. Sorry yeah. about that. But, you know, <laughs> so, really, we have like a 1980s-style knockdown stucco finish. It's yeah. totally inappropriate for the era of this ass. It, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know how it ended up there, but it's, it's totally out of place. The other major change is the chandeliers are right now this really ornate palace style you know, chandelier. If you look at these pictures, you'll see they're almost flat like wagon wheel. We have a modern rendition, which is a flat chandelier that kind of emulates what it was in the past, but giving it a modern look to it. 
the railings all stay, the structure stays, uh, nothing is being really moved around. The 1980s style front desk that is there again, that's really kind of a sore thumb and sticks out, um, is being removed. And that'll be torn out and it'll be replaced with, um, sorry if I'm going too that's fast. Okay. No, I like ahead. to get to the point. Go sorry. ahead, I love you. Uh, <laughs> that 80 style desk obviously is not historical at all. Uh, doesn't belong there. We're going to replace it with these uh, bespoke clad um, iron or sorry leather wrapped with rivets around it to give it a 1920s almost industrial look to it so you can see how that looks you will see also there's like brass elements these are all not things from the 1920s right when you walk in you want to feel like you're in the era and i think right now you walk in and you say why am i walking into 1980s at the same time i'm walking into the 1920s mm -hmm. so this in our opinion you see the chandeliers they're all they're modern, but they're flat, similar to how the old chandeliers used to look. We think that's much more consistent with the way the hotel used to originally look. You can tell from this rendering that basically all the railings, the ceiling stays intact, the original floors stay there. Really, when you think about it, it it's, it's paint and, and finishes to most of it, except for the front desk that gets ripped out. And I think that's um, that's There's important to do. One other one other thing that we should mention is the is the surround for the. Um for the the entry to the and um if you dining actually, room area. If you yeah. go back one just real quick see, see that that and this isn't really a, a structural item but it's kind of fun and you might enjoy it which is the whole keys slots we're actually going to to, to redo actually buy vintage keys put them in make it seem like it's the original 1920s experience and check-in and while that may not be actually in the purview of, of this board because it's not structural i thought you might want to hear that and, and figure out that you know we're really sincere about making this really you know the way it should have always been done in the first place okay and then we've got um obviously the lobby bar these are the existing conditions and there's the loggia um which was enclosed later um this um there's a there's a small entry to in the back of the first photo uh to the uh kitchen area that's going to be uh gone but otherwise and that was that was not historic that was just something that was placed there um in the last renovation actually right before the last renovation um and uh, you will go ahead the columns have agglomerate stone or a, a faux stone on it all of that's going to be removed yeah and you'll see the um, the entry that goes underneath the uh, balcony there is an opening and that opening leads through two stairwells that go down short stairwells go down into the lobby area where the uh, check-in desk is and so that area right there historically had let me just find it for us gosh I'm so sorry I can't yeah I know um, the long story short is there that space is. was separated historically and what we're doing is we're restoring that element there's a separation you can see under this balcony there's uh, this was from uh, 1954 and this this separation was there in earlier photos too but this this shows that that space was separated out for noise attenuation we're going to do the same thing and so I guess um, you know we can go through the the mezzanine which is the other significant floor but we would need more time so I apologize I apologize and we only give you 15 minutes and it's a huge project. big building so I was say, why, why it's it's, it's in the statute it's in the statutes yeah. um, is it yeah. statutorium can we add more time if they request it may we have another seven minutes you have a motion please I move that we add another seven minutes to their presentation. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. aye. Seven minutes. Thank you. I feel that we can do this. Okay. Now we're on the third floor mezzanine. The first three levels of this building are probably the most significant from a public experience standpoint. The ground floor, the lobby, and then the mezzanine. The mezzanine is a colonnaded, beautiful area. Um, you will see... Um, in the floor plan here, there is at the bottom of your page, you'll see a curved little um, element next to the elevators, and that is a balcony that overlooks the dining room area. Um, what we're proposing 
um, here as a change. There's only two changes on this on this level um, that are architecturally changes. This there's a a, a little um, sorry glass. There's there's glazing that we're going to install at um, at the wall right there by the elevator uh, wall all the way over to the other side to basically attenuate noise, but it will be just glazing so it will not affect the the guest experience by you know obstructing any views or anything and there will be a door in it so that if people want to experience going out on the balcony and looking over the the um crystal. the crystal ball, the dining room um they can do that still and that uh from what i understand from some of the old people that i met when during the first restoration that i was involved with um that was that balcony was used for um political candidacy announcements. So we might want to, you know, let that happen again. So you'll see um, some of the historic photos. This is a meeting room in here. And um, I'll let you guys speak to what's going on um, in these in these rooms. But these are basically yeah. getting, we're getting new glazing on the windows and. Yeah, I mean, literally this, this is mostly cosmetic. The ceiling stays the way it is. Um, it's new carpet. It's a skim of the, the vertical walls. Uh, it's paint and you know so it, it's really just cosmetic the room essentially stays the same the other thing is if you see those windows by the side there I don't just the glass will be replaced uh, again it, it, the glass that was put in there ended up being a almost like say 1970s era type yeah, glass but, uh, I'm not okay. sure how these things yeah. happened but they did and that's the balcony area that you that you just we just talked about um, so let's go to the room floors. These are the fourth through the nineteenth floors. This is the only historic photo I could find of the of rooms in the hotel, and a manager was using um, that. Now, what we're proposing here is a more. It's actually a little bit more of a, a reference to history. Uh, Joe, please, please explain. You you're so good at explaining your room. No, no, so, sorry. Um, so a lot of what we're doing actually, and you don't see it so much from this, is again, I'll talk cosmetically, but first of all, it, it's skimming the walls, it's carpet, and it's new furniture, right? Um, what we're also doing in the bathrooms is we have a new vanity that we'll be putting in. Uh, the red marble that was installed in there um, is mm -hmm. a uh, brand requirement that we, uh, this hotel, by the way, will be within the Hilton Reservation System, although it will not be Hilton Hotel. It'll be, you know, its own independent name operating independently, but it'll be in the Hilton Reservation System. As you can see, what we're installing is something um, that's just aesthetically an update. Uh, even the mirror, I think, is a little bit bespoke and feels 1920s in the way that it has the lights on the side and it's a little bit different than, than your typical mirrors today. Um, you know, one thing you don't really see around there is the artwork, and I know artwork, again, is getting a little off topic, but, you know, what some of the rooms are having you know, vintage type books with the story of Gasparilla on it, framed, put on the wall. Black and white photos of women in gowns from the 1920s. So, you know, very different than what it is today. Today there's like fruit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it, it's really, it's meant to pay an homage. If you look at this, this is a hallway. You can see again, there's like these chandelier type items, which I don't think appear historically anywhere in the property, nor do I think it's era appropriate. Um, we're going to replace that with something that we view as a 1920s flashback, which are these like long stem lights that actually have that um, shade over them. Again, the whole hallways will be skim coated. Okay, and then we talk about vertical access in our in our application. We talk mainly about this. All we're doing is ripping out this carpet and replacing it and cleaning these things. Um, so not a whole lot, but we also talk about um, the lift. Uh, work would you like to talk yeah, about that? Yeah, I mean, that? we're replacing yeah. both of them. We're relocating one of them for ease of access and, uh, and updating it because one of them is not per ADA code. Back to the elevators, though, too, we are painting the exterior of the elevators to match the brass look that we're going to go with for the rest of the color uh, motif in the lobby as well. Okay, so enough on vertical access. This is just showing that opening again. Okay, and then we've got the image. Yeah, the, so the mechanical work um, uh, obviously required the, um, this is the, the, the main part of the renovation is not the guest room uh, mechanical work, but the um, public space and the, uh, the corridor. Uh, so the corridor uh, HVAC system needs to be replaced completely. Um, we are actually, when we do the re-roofing, um, we're gonna raise, uh, put new stands up there, raise it up to the 18 inch uh, minimum requirement. 
uh, for the condensing units that are going in place uh, for not only the new units but also the existing units because we are doing a new roof. Um, we, um, uh, and again, this is uh, condensing units that will be piped through the sidewall um, to a mechanical shaft that's basically just beyond that last condensing unit um, and then running up all the way to the 19th floor uh, for, um, for new uh, conditioned air in the corridors. And that is our presentation. Quick, but. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't see anybody in the audience, so we're not going to, I don't think we need to ask, but um, we'll go on. You do have a staff, or at least a. So good evening, commissioners. Uh, Ron Vila, staff for the Historic Preservation. It was a pleasure working on this building the first time, and then the second time again, we had the ability to go on site and and had a tour and looking at the conditions firsthand and then uh, what they're proposing today. So you can see the level of detail of the presentation. Uh, as this comes forward, uh, this application is consistent with the Secretary of Interior Standards with the plans that re we reviewed. Usually when you see a building of this size, you go through an adaptive reuse. It, it changes you know, what it was originally. The, the refreshing item here today is that it's staying, it was a hotel, it's staying a hotel. Uh, the interior spaces were respected, the volumes and the treatments, you know, moving forward. Um, this is part one. Uh, they'll work with us if they un un uncover anything along the renovations. If we can handle it administratively, not to hold up the project, we'll move it along. If it's a substantial fine that they have, they'll come back to the board and, you know, keep you involved in the process. You will see this again, though, at part two after completion. So I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. I'm going to go ahead and ask um, questions if uh, we want to start with Mr. Sutton. I do have a technical question. Am I correct in understanding that uh, your tower windows are going to be repaired and then fixed, if you will, into place? They will not be operable? Correct. That's correct. That's hotel. Um, I'm wondering how that fits uh, within a number of different uh, guidelines. Uh, first of all, uh, within the nature of the Secretary of Interior standards, you know, we're, we're basically, um, if not replacing, renovating operable window units into a non-operating status. No, actually, actually, the the windows are fixed now. They, they are were fixed they now. were fixed at, at, during the first renovation. Yes, and and it's it's basically a hotel safety issue. You can't have p hotel guests be able to open the windows and well, jump out. We we, but, we we will not be allowed in the Hilton system or any major brand system if we have operable windows. It, it will be the the black sheep of the hotel world because if someone can open that window, can you imagine a child getting through and falling out? <clears throat> and I know. You know, it, traditionally boards like this don't want to take the position of you have to make them operable because no one wants to put their name on that order, right? So I, I think it's a very dangerous topic, and we have to be very careful about it because, you know, deaths can result. Okay, uh, understood. And, of course, uh, since it, this is an existing condition brought to us from a before piece of time, <laughs> I'm right. assuming also that the, the, the fire marshals also have their blessing on that as a general concept. Fire with. marshals had to come in several times when we first brought it back to life. I was working with Tony Markopoulos mm -hmm. every day during the restoration and renovation from... Okay. Uh, second item related to that is uh, the, the tower windows and, of course, your ground level uh, storefronts and specialty window types. Are those going to be renovated in place? Or are you going to pop these units out replace them, uh, repair them as necessary, and pop them back in? The glass only. Glass only? Glass only. If it's broken, we're repairing it. Okay, but you're looking at re uh, uh, re refurbing, patching, repairing elements yeah. in place. Yes. Yes. The wood storefront, it, it would be completely uh, repaired in place, correct. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Mouse. Oh, a few questions. So you did mention extensive experience of your selected contractor. Uh, who is the engineer of record? Jay Ammon, architect. Okay. Did they have extensive uh, experience in historical preservation? That's why they were selected, correct. Okay, good. Um, are any of the terracotta units being replaced with precast or GFRC? Or are you going to replace it with terracotta? No. 
No what? We were not going to replace them with terracotta. I mean with precast, sorry. And not GFRC. Correct. Are any of the water tables, ledges, is there any plan intent to water waterproof with liquid waterproofing? See, we are sealing. Side. Once we, we uh, repoint the entire building, we are sealing it for a 20-year warranty. What's receiving the 20-year warranty? The, the, the brick sealing. Is that your the question? The sealant? No. I'm referring to the water tables and the ledges. Uh, I believe they're terracotta right now. So like the, the ledges on the... On oh, the the, okay. Yeah, yeah, the ledges he's, he's concerned about. Um, mm -hmm. The ones that are... It is common practice to install liquid waterproofing. I just want to make sure that... You're concerned that. about the further deterioration of the terracotta over time. Right. So, yeah. a, so a sealant, sealant application on the, on the terracotta? I just want to make sure that the liquid waterproofing is not visible from across the street. The waterproofing itself is not visible? Mm -hmm. Understood. I don't know how to answer that. I'd okay. have to go back to my okay. engineer, honestly. Um, a clear sealant? No, no. They, 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 they intend to use the clear sealant on the masonry brick. Yeah, I understand that. But I'm um, referring to the Skyward face of terracotta. It's yeah, a, I, I, I honestly, I'd have to talk to him okay. and what his plan is there. Is there a mock-up approval process in place, and what exactly are you going to be mocking up? They are trying to mock up to match the existing mortar for the brick. Mm -hmm. um, they've done already one just to see what it looked like on the ground floor. They're going to do it again on the upper floors once the scaffolding goes up. Okay. Do you know if that motor is pre-blended? Uh, pre? Pre-blended. Pre no. They're going to have to match on site, and then they'll get it pre-blended once everything's approved from the matching. They're going to formulate on site. They're going to have to figure out what the color is on site after the mock-ups, and then they're going to create the mortar after that. Okay. Um, are you allowing your contractor to sub out portions of the work? Sub is the contractor the will be allowed Western in this case? Are they going to be allowed to sub portions of this work, subcontract portions of the work? I'm just curious. What I'm uh, aiming at is, is there a qualification process for subcontractors in the event that Western wants to hire subcontractors? It, it, to it should work? be known that Western is an exterior renovation contractor right. so if we were hiring a general gc i think okay. that's a very valid concern which is well that's great but who's going to do the actual restoration but western is actually the executing and performing and responsible they're, they're bringing they're actually bringing their superintendents in and putting them up um you know here in tampa uh, they're not local um, but um, they are coming in and bringing that expertise with them and workers with them um, Obviously, they're going to subcontract out some of the local things like the scaffolding, things like that, that don't have anything to do with the actual work, uh, but are secondary to the work uh, in okay. support of the No, I know of project. Western. I know they're very reputable. Um, last question. It's really not really part of this discussion, but some of the photos uh, indicated deterioration of brick, terracotta, coping stones. It's going to be months before you guys mobilize. Is there any plan to install overhead protection sidewalk sheds? Uh, there's actually any. some overhead protection that's installed right now, right now? Okay. Uh, yeah on Florida um, but yeah that's um, so when they come in and do the scaffolding for the exterior facade renovation they're gonna we're gonna concentrate on Cass Street and Florida Avenue okay. first um, obviously that being Maine and Maine um, but then they're gonna mobilize around to the uh, the north face and the east face for sort of a phase two um, but uh, but yeah it's important that that uh, the, the first thing that goes up is going to be the uh, uh, the scaffolding for the uh, for the uh, you know pedestrian protection. Okay, no other questions. Thank you. I have none right now. Mr. Prokop. Hi. Thanks. Uh, good presentation. Um, I had a couple questions. The uh, inside some of the uh, historic photographs, some of those the the wall finishes appeared either textured or patterned or something. Um, and I'm not sure what they were. I don't know if they were Venetian plaster or something else like that. Um, you said there's there's some fake stone veneer on the columns yeah. that you're taking off. Yeah, in the uh, in the crystal um, dining room. Yeah. Do you know what's underneath them? I, I can I can speak to that because I was there during the time right. this was put on. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was it was just a, a plastered column. Just it was just plain and. Tony Markopoulos uh, petitioned to have 
to clad the columns with stone, which was denied. And so he decided to be, you know, creative and, and put fake stone on there. He, he wanted that's his right. palace, right? He so was going to have his palace. If he couldn't put stone, he was going to paint it that's, like marble. That's what happened. So. Was, I, 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 I <laughs> understand. Uh, have, was there any, even in the original restoration, or is there a plan now for any investigation to find out what was under that plaster that you found, if there was anything, if there was another original material that had been plastered over since the 20s. He, there, part of those columns were bashed out. When, when we walked into the hotel, and I believe me, I, I walked into there with Tony for the very first time. We got the keys and we just went in and it was a mess. And I will tell you, a lot of the columns were not, you know, they were not, the surfaces were not solid. They were, you know, there had been many years of abuse and, and homeless right. people in there and all sorts of fires and whatnot. So there wasn't anything really behind it. It was just, it wasn't stone or anything. It wasn't anything special. It okay. was. I, I was just wondering if the, if the investigation had been done because they right. typically in, 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 in that day and age, yeah. um, Features like that would get a special finish treatment. It would be, so, you know, I'm not going to say it was gilded or, or, or anything, or, or, but a special polished plaster or something that had a little more. And I didn't know if, I'm just asking if you guys He agreed. Done. That's, why, that's why he looked at it. He was from yeah. Greece, so he's, right. he knows something about history and historic <laughs> stuff. But he was, he was thinking it's odd that they just made it, you know, this plain. But that's yeah. why he was he was petitioning to put stone on it because right. that's what if you're Greek you put everything. You know, put the stone original on it. finish back in the 20s may have been painted over and plastered over and stuck it over multiple times, and that's I'm just I'm asking if real investigation of peeling layers off. I, he did not do that. Done. He did not do that. I think it's kind of lost the time. My understanding it was like down to like the concrete column when he it came was. in. You know the disrepair it was when he took it over. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, we, I don't. I'm not aware. I'm just looking oh. at the historic photographs and seeing what, to me, looks like something on those columns and on some of those walls, like a textured finish or some sort of special finish. I'm, yeah. just, a, I'm just asking yeah, questions. Yeah, I do. I, we're not aware of it. Um, when you're raising the condensing units, are you going to have any kind of a uh, line of sight study done to make sure that anything that's being raised is not going to become much more visible from adjacent buildings or the street? Are, they are some of those units, if they're going to be raised, are they going to be pulled back further away from the parapet to, to, to eliminate any yeah. kind of a, a line of sight issue? That's a great issue? question. So the only place that really applies is at the fourth floor roof. Um, obviously, 19 stories in here, we're, we're not going to see that. Um, but um, so, yes, all of the units are currently on the inside corner of the. Um, okay. So, uh, guests can actually see it, which isn't great, but um, they see it, but uh, you can't see it from the street um, where they are now. There is one unit that is, um, that is sort of outbound from the others, right. kind of a rogue unit. Um, that is actually going to be moved. So, um, but I know more, but more you're going to you're going to raise them up on stands, you know, to meet yep. current codes and to get the clearance underneath yep. them. So you we're can raising work them on the four roof inches. We have to raise them four inches. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, but we are going to we are going to make sure that the sight lines are, are true and correct, and we cannot see them from the street. Um, and then the other thing I had I, is there any evidence that the exterior brick has ever been sealed before? I don't, I, I don't think so, um, but I don't know for sure. Um, it um, obviously that uh, dissipates over time, long period of time. Uh, right. But I can tell you that the building facade in its current state is not protected. Um, right. I mean, know. well, most of these old buildings, you know, with with no air conditioning, they were meant to not be waterproof. They're meant to breathe, breathe and yeah, have right. yeah. have the moisture and the air, you know, travel through them and to dry them out and uh, whatnot. Um, so what happens sometimes when you seal brick facades that were never meant to be sealed, you create an issue with moisture inside the walls. Um, and so it, it concerns me. And, and I know from my standpoint. Um, Although this will be, we'll make sure there's a pressurization here. So it's not just, you know, sealing the exterior. This is all going to be, and it's reviewed, I think, by you know, our engineers. Mm -hmm. That's going to be pressurized because I, I agree with you. If you seal it too tight, and some, some of the modern buildings have this problem, you seal it too tight and it actually causes condensation on the inside. 
Um, but in my experience, if you pressurize correctly, mm -hmm. it creates that balance. And right. so it doesn't create that condensation issue where you have a battle of interior and exterior you know, temperatures. And we do have an engineer that is involved with the corridor um, air unit, which will dump into the gas well, turbines eventually. I have a follow-up question because this, this whole train was something I was going to ask about. Um, normally, you would not seal brick of this era. Um, and my question is, do you have a building science group on your team? When you say science group. Building science group. They actually specialize in the science of building envelopes. And many of them have core team members that actually specialize in historic properties as well. And they'll specialize in specific materials and systems, bricks versus wood. Or terracotta. And, and terracotta stone, yes. The, the issue is not just the pressurization. If you seal it, you can get into a situation where it pops the bricks off. It'll break your mortar. The other question is, has an intensive study been done of the different mortars on the building to understand which ones are the original and appropriate for this particular building? Depending on your mixture, how much lime or not lime that you have in your mixture, you can also cause other issues. Thirdly, <laughs> investigation of all your weeps. If your weeps are plugged up or if your mortar gets reported incorrectly and you plug your weeps, you're going to have more issues with your building envelope. So that's why that the question of do you have a building science, building envelope, um, specific special engineering team, and oftentimes they include mechanical as well as architectural members on those teams, they will help greatly in understanding whether or not what, what, sealing or not sealing makes sense here. What firms have you worked with before in, in building science? Just so I get an idea of, of. I could give you a whole list, but not right off the top of my head right now. I'd have to go through my Rolodex. Yeah, but, Susan, can I yeah, express more Mr. concern? Mr. So, yes. the reason I ask about the sealant is the motor and the brick, especially that age, is designed to absorb water to a degree like a sponge. That's the design. Uh, many parts of the country in historical landmark buildings, sealers are not allowed. Even though the specs, the data, sh uh, data sheet might say it's breathable. It's not breathable. And exactly what, what happens is what Susan says. It pops out either the brick or the motor. Now regarding the motor, if that's the original motor, which I kind of doubt that would be type O motor, which is softer. You guys are going to install type M, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the motor should be tested. You want to match the motor type. You don't want the motor to be stronger than the brick. I mean, these are major, major concerns, and having an engineer on record that has that, I'm surprised they'll specify a sealer, a clear sealer. You might think you're protecting the facade, you're not. It's nearsighted, short term, in my opinion. Or at least have the appropriate material It's applied. not a common practice for historical buildings. In, in, in fact, not knowing what happened in the original the, the prior restoration efforts, it could have been some incorrect materials in that case that have led to some of the issues that you're facing now. But it would be the recommendation that you seek out a specialty team member, if not a, a firm, that can help you understand what's going on with the building envelope from a historic perspective and do the right thing. You're spending all that money. I mean, it seems like most of the money you're going to put is in the envelope, so spend it wisely this time, right? No, I, I think that's that's uh, we appreciate input in, in firms you have dealt with in the past. Yeah. The I don't think there was much uh, restoration to that facade. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry about too many in, inappropriate materials used because I just don't think anything was done. You don't think anything was done? Even really, in the repair work, because you can tell in some of the well, imagery, there are some there has been some patching we, repairing. Our, yeah. Even that little bit can do great damage to right. your envelope. It just takes a little bit to squeeze one brick, and then it. It's and cascading. Then it starts popping and then they start yeah. cracking and yeah. Um, and we, 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 we certainly have a list that we can pull together with staff and they yeah. can they can send that to yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was great. Okay. Great. Other than that, any other questions? Um, I just have a question about the storefronts on the first floor. Um, uh, Ms. Chestine, mm -hmm. um, is that original material or is that something that was done? You know, yeah. perhaps recently. That was that was recreated during the last restoration. 
from the historic photos. We came before this commission at the mm -hmm. time, and we were proposing um, an extruded aluminum, which um, would look like wood, but be you know painted because it's commercial and it would be easier to maintain. And uh, the commission at that time decided that that was not appropriate and gave us the option of using wood or copper. So he chose wood because copper was astronomically expensive. Bronze, bronze, bronze. <laughs> and so, bronze probably would have been acceptable. So, <laughs> so anyway, we uh, that is why we have what we have right now. Um, and but they were they were recreated at great pain, believe me, um, on site. And they were there were boards on those uh, openings yeah. at the time when we took mm -hmm. it over. Right, another question: Have have you? Discovered or have do you have ownership of, of any original construction documents from the building? Has has that been found? No, in actually, archives? I researched it at the time for yeah. the prior restoration, right. and there were none. The city has none. The county has none. Um, I I searched for right. the construction documents, and there the, were just no records. The University of Florida and USF architecture programs also they but they. Have I talked to one of their their historians who yeah. wrote a, a whole paper on the building. Okay, sorry. All right, no, I just. Again, I wish question. we did, you know. know. It's probably behind one of those column covers. <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> I've got a quick question about the signage um, that's being proposed on the awnings at the entryways. Is there any historical pictures or data that shows where there's ever been any signage on those? The, uh, the only signage that existed was on... Um, that we know of, because the you know as you as you know when you look for historic photos, and I went to the John F. Germany Library, and you know several days in a row, and went through all their historic photos, looking for any historic photo of this hotel at all, and um, you know you're just limited to what you can find. Um, I will see. Let me see if I can find the um, facade photos. That are, okay, so here's here's one. Where they had signage, you will see, um, is on a, a window next to the street there. That happens to be, I believe this is, is this? That's Cass. That's Cass, right? Yeah, yeah and, and so um, we have been warned because these are technically in the right-of-way, and we can't have signage in the right-of-way, um, and there was some signage, there was some signage, um, Hang on, uh, on on canopies, and I ca I can't easily find them. Let me see if I have them in the historic photos of the of the old structure. Well, th there was a blade sign in the corner one. There right? was a blade sign. And then there was canopies with yes. wording on the canopies. Yes, there were there was a blade sign which we have a banner permit to put at the corner of Cass and Florida. But that's uh, something that would be um, overhanging the street and might yeah. pose some sort of safety risk. Um, there were also some can canopies over the windows, over the storefronts, that had some sort of signage on them. But there, I, I, I have not seen any historic photos, but what I have is what I have seen. So, so I have a question about the blade sign. You, you seem to indicate that there might be some issues with obstructing or something you just said if we if we considered the blade sign it would be there potentially would be an issue with no the blade sign is already a subject of the city has has created a banner permits to allow us to have the blade oh, sign okay. on the corner okay and um but what i'm saying is i mean it would obstruct views from the you know because it's it's long you know sign it would obstruct views through the primary view corridor from the hotel but I mean, yeah, we've got permission to put it. Would it would obstruct whose views? Of, that's what I don't understand. Okay, hang on. Of people, do you see? You see on the on the um, screen. I don't know if you can see this. It's really hard to see it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, but it can't project more than three or four feet from uh, the building facade. I, I, my concern is a little bit different. I just worry about the structural rabbit hole that you'd be going down. In oh, absolutely. I mean, you have right. issues right. already. Right. And, and given that this building has had some issues in right. the past, I would just worry about relying more on that facade to bear more weight. Right. And wind loads and things like that in hurricane season. That's where I get nervous because, God forbid, that, that blade rips off and goes flying into the apartment buildings that 
didn't exist before that now do exist and will exist around Absolutely, the Absolutely, I understand. Yeah, and, and the, the code requirements these days for the reinforcement and the structural capacity of that sign would be astronomical would be compared yeah. to what they used to. So the follow-up exactly. question would be, is the signage a requirement by the Hilton Group, or is that something you're just doing because you want the... Um, it, it, it's both. Uh, you know, the brand requires that you have some signage on the front of your hotel, but also I think it's just um, you know prudent to have some identification. Otherwise, people will drive past your hotel time and time again, saying, "Where in God's name is this place?" So um, we're trying to find the most tasteful way to do it without being overbearing, without making it the main focal point. We want the building to be the focal point. Um, so we're trying to do it in a way that, you know, you can see from the primary road, Ford Avenue, uh, as well as coming down Cass Street, because that's how you would probably, the two ways you would approach the hotel, going down Cass Street, pulling over, going up Ford Avenue and pulling in the little turnout and unloading. Well, also from a standpoint of preservation, you know, the hotel, anything that helps it be successful helps um, them maintain the hotel. So obviously we want people to know how to, how to do business with the hotel because we're trying to keep it alive, you know, and that, that does take money. If, if nobody ever goes there, then it's going to go back into its state previously. So that's, I mean, we, we thought this might be a little elegant solution, but obviously respect your expertise. So I have, I have a question re related to the, uh, the site, the, the walkways on Florida and Cass. Is there any work that you, um, think you might do at this time to the actual pavement surface areas? Right now, no. We're not uh, contemplating. I mean, I guess one part of that would be an FDOT solution uh, with the sidewalk that abuts Florida mm -hmm. Avenue. Um, so I'm not really sure even where, <laughs> where to begin there. You really need but, to make them better partners. Um, they always come up as problems. Yeah. Um, okay. The prior owner actually had to get permission to install the brick on Florida Avenue. Oh, I've heard all California. kinds of stories. I've actually been part of projects that had to, <laughs> so I understand. It was I'm fun, sure some you know. of us up here have mm -hmm. been there done that. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, I only, since that is not historical fabric at those, at the uh, store windows on, on the first floor, um, could you bring back, well, I'm not gonna force you to bring it back, but that wood looks horrible, and it was not wood that anybody would have used uh, in 1923 or when, what was the year that this was built? 26. 26. Okay, it wasn't. No one would have supplied that, and even after they supplied really good wood, they put awnings over it so that it would not deteriorate immediately, um, and so uh, it seems in my personal opinion is that that's a, that's a really difficult uh, and dangerous uh, solution there. Be dangerous just to, it, from the maintenance aspect of it. You know, uh, it, it's interesting, right? Um, if we would all sit in a room and figure out the best way to do things, we may have come up with different solutions. We didn't build the windows. But when getting actually tax credit approval from SHPO and uh, National Parks, actually the opposite comment came back which is if you replace the doors, make sure they're wood. Because we came back with steel solutions that would mm -hmm. look historic, that could be reinforced for hurricanes, stop flooding and water penetration with high winds and things that are very practical in today's world. And that was scorned upon. So we're kind of caught in between, you know, uh, a very material concession that we're getting historical tax credits from the federal level um, and what they want that probably wouldn't be in align with that. So if forced to choose, we'd have to choose the bigger federal program and what they want. So right. unfortunately in this world, we're, we're trying to all balance ADA, historic, you know, federal level, local level, and what everyone wants, and they don't always align. Well, you have to, you have to listen to the SHPO. <laughs> What's that? You have to listen to the SHPO. Yeah. Well, absolutely. The, yeah. The reason for that is because historically they were wood, and if you can replace them with wood, we, we want right. to see the original and material And they will be wood. Choice. Right. Yeah. The question that is begged here is whether or not you can re reconsider the, the uh, installation of awnings over all your openings. The, the issue there was, uh, you know, we, we applied before 
it, it was the projection because DOT objected and said, you know, we can't have that because what if we have to drive a truck over the sidewalk? And I said, well, we'll just remove the awning then, just let us know. No, we can't have that. So we, we did, we actually did ask about that, the prior owner, not, not right. Joe. Um, so, you know, this is, this is we're again, buffeted between, you know, nice to have and, and difficult right. to have. And again, you've got the hurricane thing and all the, you know, other things that uh, people get concerned about on a practical basis, but there was a, a reason why the... Yeah. So then the other question is, because this then follows another question, mm -hmm. in terms of your hardware package, if you were working with a hardware consultant, then talk about rain guards and things like that, that, that can help protect your openings. There are a lot of things on the market today that you can hide better, that you can, um, you can get certain finishes and colors that help uh, meld in with your color palette and your material choices. But provide better protection. They're going to protect your wood, the door, yeah. and so they'll last longer. Do you I'm, know? I'm going to prevail upon you for some input. I love your suggestions, and I, and I think well, we um, all are. We all, most of us are professionals in this field, right. so we understand where you're coming from and where right. you're landing. We just we want to. See, you're putting this money out there. We want to see you succeed. We want this, as you said, you are. You are nurturers, right? You don't see yourselves stewards. as long-term stewards. stewards. I like nurturers <laughs> better. But, um, <laughs> but um, and so when you're when you're doing this, I, f I feel that, and that's what I love about what you've presented tonight, and what right. I feel from all four of you presenting is that you really care about what you're about to do sure. here, right? And you want it to be successful long-term, right? So those that's yeah. why these questions are coming along because we support that. What, I, I, do you know what species all that wood storefront is? It didn't look in very good condition right now already, I mean, and that's only 20 years old, right? Less than 20 years old? It's yeah, and it's yeah. from 2012. Two, yeah, two, yeah tw well, actually more like 2007. And I'm just wondering if it was done a little bit cheaper than it probably needed to be I, done. I think and, it hasn't and, been maintained as... But even this, a species of wood can matter. You know, yeah. what's underneath there? What kind of wood is there? Yeah, the existing wood is very porous. I'd agree. It's not, it yeah. doesn't, uh, it's it not doesn't good. look like a good, mm -hmm. you know, mahogany or any kind of wood Cypress. like that um, that would that would naturally last 40 or 50 years, you know, with a clear coating or, or a stain. Um, you may want to investigate that. Yeah, that that, that's good. Something. What frustrates me is, you know, you, you show up and you think, okay, hopefully the person before you did, did everything. It right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? No. No? You have five minutes for rebuttal. Anything you'd like to add for testimony before we close the public portion? I could go on forever, but I won't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Dangerous it. question. <laughs> <for me. laughs> thank Anyone you else? So th thank you very much. You. We really appreciate and uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Absolutely. All right, we'll go ahead and close the public portion and we'll discuss the case. Let me get my notes straight. They're, they're, they're opening Pandora's box. Oh, yeah. They know it and they're prepared. Now, what the actual details of the individual right. bits and pieces for refurb, fit, finish, you name it, is you know still up in the air. But I think they're going entirely in the appropriate direction to begin with. I, I do have concerns about the brick ceiling, um, which, you know, in 40, 40 years of my experience and 60 years of my uh, associates at the office experience, is not to be done to historic brick. Um, and of course, matching, you know, getting the right soft mortar so that the mortar is not harder than the brick and then doesn't create bricks falling because you used, you know, different, different mortar. Um, the, point, the point of bringing on board a building science specialty team with, with historic background is a big deal. If they don't have one, they should get one. Um, they can keep you out of the. They can keep you out of the weeds. Yeah. But what we were discussing here is the architecture. 
Right, right. This is not, this is face to face stuff. There's a lot of processes that we go out of place to discuss the specifics and see it, right? No. No, no, this is this is this is basically my understanding is this is saying proceed and we approve of what you're doing. And of, yes, they're going to have to deal with Shippo, they're going to have to deal with other people and other and other and, and come back to us at the end and show what they did. Um, to actually get the final um, to get the taxes after. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So do I. I've seen too many removed in this city. Um, yes, it would be good if we had more buildings left that we could do this to. Can I get a motion to reopen the public hearing, please? I move that we reopen the public hearing. A second. Second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Um, Ron, can you please go over the step one, step two, step three again, please, for the ad valorem process? So we're looking at part one this morning or this evening that will draw upon the existing condition. And if you look at the ad valorem process, they, their features and the features were discussed. They didn't really go into detail, but each item from, from the, the lower bulkhead to, to the windows that aren't operable, things of that nature, were all features. They give you the description of the existing condition, and then they give you the proposal of what they're planning to doing. All of this discussion with the techniques and, and, the, and the treatments are all very important, but you're looking at a more global approach at the features and what they, they've showed. I worked with them to incorporate the historic photos. So we looked at have some historic photos. We looked at the existing condition and how this building is gonna be renovated for the next 100 years. So part one is this evening, you're gonna give a recommendation. They're gonna work with staff. We're gonna work with their professionals. We're gonna work with the, inf the information that's gonna be forwarded to them as well. Anything along the way, we'll be in contact with them. We'll be in constant communication with them. And then after completion of the process that was presented tonight, they will come back and show you the completed project. Any questions for staff before we close this again? So in regards to the professional team, as a board, are we allowed to ask them to add a certain type of engineer and or building science team potentially? I think it was a great discussion. I think everybody's goal is parallel to, to save this building and do the best at this particular case for this building at this time. Uh, if you want to put it as a recommendation, I think they've heard it. You could put it there, but it's not binding. Okay. Well, that was going to be my main question. The reason why I opened it up is I didn't think in the ad valorem phase one that we had the option to add in any sort of uh, recommendations. I thought it was just we approve what they've shown us or we don't approve it. Well, you could recommend. give recommendations to like the signage or, or things okay. of that nature, okay. but to, to incorporate any professionals, I think that goes beyond the scope of the, the program, but good discussion. I think everybody you know enjoyed the discussion yeah. here and it'll open some eyes. I think we could make recommendations, not conditions. Yeah. Right, it's not a condition. Yeah. It's right. a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. But even then, I didn't okay. think we had that purview. Okay. Any other questions? No. no? But wait a minute. We've already. I, well, I, I would like to know about the timeline, but I. Uh, it's not really. You want. You, when do you want to open? I mean, what's. We've got three. Is the, is the public hearing back open? It's still yeah. open. It is. Well, I haven't closed it. <laughs> Again. So, so, sorry. Um, number one is. Um, you know, uh, I sincerely ask for input because we will come back to you and ask. So whether it's a recommendation officially or not, I can assure you that um, I don't want to spend millions and millions of dollars yeah. and have bricks pop out. That's scared me enough that I'm taking your, your input very seriously. Yeah. Um, so uh, I plan to work with Ron and he can get information from you and we can, you know, research that. I think we'll also approach Western. Our contractor's done this many times. It would, I'd be surprised if they don't have people like that on their staff, but in addition, it's always good to have you know a third party that's not the people doing the work that would advise. So it's my plan to follow up and pursue this, whether we do this or not, or you know it's a recommendation officially or not. So I wanted to assure you that, but then uh, Commissioner Myers, did you have a question? I just was wondering about the timeline. Uh, the timeline is as soon as possible. Um, Realistically. We, um, <laughs> what's that? Oh, for the opening of the hotel? For the that's reopening no, of the hotel, yes. When do, you, when do you want to be open? 
comparable. What's 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 100%. the date that we hope to be complete by September? Early September? Mid September. Yeah. We. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a Not second. with the exterior, though. The right. exterior project goes into yeah, August say, of 2024. Oh, no, yeah, that goes a lot longer. But the hotel itself would open prior. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> what these are these people fast. talking about? <laughs> wow, that's why nobody else has any money on the project. Yeah. Anyway. All okay. right, thank you. Anything else? Okay. Any other questions before we close it again? Sir, um, you do have five more minutes for rebuttal if there's anything you, you want to add. No? Okay, we'll go ahead and close it. Continue discussing. Thank you. Any other thoughts? No. no. All I'll add is, is how refreshing it was to have a group come in front of us that, you know, I hear passion. I hear more than just about the money. You know, they, they, they seem to really love what they do, which tells me that any recommendation this board gives or staff gives or anyone else gives for that matter, they're gonna take into cons you know, very serious consideration. I agree. Um, so, you know, I, I, I applaud them because this is probably one of my favorite buildings in the, in it's, the city. It, it, is, it is a landmark in the true sense of architectural city planning. It is a landmark. It's one of the first buildings I recognized when I first moved to Tampa, it has been the building that I used to use to steer through town before all the other towers got built. Um, and my kids used to point it out when they were kids, when they were little. So um, I applaud you and your, your entire team. I mean, that means the subs that are actually doing the work. Um, it's great to see it. As I, as I noted, there are too many properties that have been lost in the city, and um, especially with the terracotta work. Retain a motion at this time? Could I? Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Well, you can. Says, you put something in. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd like to move to approve the ad valorem tax exemption application <laughs> part one for the plans presented at this public hearing in the case number ARC T23 02 for the property located at 905 North Florida Avenue in Tampa. For the rehabilitation of the property because based on the facts and the record, the proposed project is consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabs and guidelines for rehabilitate, rehabilitating historic buildings. The second? I'll second. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand and make a name so. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have to enter all exhibits yeah, and documents much. that were not previously filed into the record. May I have a motion, please? I move that all records and exhibits presented to here at this meeting uh, that were not previously entered into the record be, in fact, entered into the record. A second. All in favor, please stand and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We are adjourned. See you next month. No.